One week ago, Tennessee saw its dreams of an SEC division crown slipping away until... Hayes drops the throw, looks, fires a slant, better to Austin Rogers, catches it, breaks a tackle to the five, touchdown Tennessee! Foster pops it to the outside, almost untouched. Lincoln boots it, spinning toward the end zone, good! And Tennessee takes the lead, 38 seconds to go. The kick spinning toward Title hopes stay alive. Touchdown, Kentucky! For the Vols, the dream continues. Only Kentucky stands in Tennessee's way for a trip to Atlanta in the SEC title game. The holiday feast continues here in Lexington, Kentucky, where all eyes of the SEC are focused today. The Tennessee Volunteers have destiny in their hands. Just one win away from playing for the SEC championship. Hoping to burst their balloon, the Kentucky Wildcats, who have not beaten the Vols in 22 years. Celebrating 75 years of SEC football, it's the Home Depot SEC on CBS, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Welcome to Lexington, home to the Kentucky Wildcats. Bring on the Vols of Tennessee. The final week of the season finds Tennessee needing a win against Kentucky to book a trip to Atlanta for next week's SEC title game. A loss sends Georgia to Atlanta to take on LSU. And hi everybody, Craig Bullerjack, Lexington. There is a playoff atmosphere here in the stadium today. And for Tennessee, it's very simple. You win, you go to Atlanta to play for the SEC title. If you lose, it's back to Knoxville. We've been taking everything one game at a time. You know. We can't really control anything else. All we can do is control what we can control and play Tennessee football. It's going to be real big that we go out there and try to make sure we spoil their dreams to make sure that we can live our dreams with this game. If we win, you know, that we get to go play in the championship game, and we, you know, we know that. I mean, if you can't get prepared and get yourself ready for the semifinals of the playoffs, I mean, then you don't have a heartbeat. I know one thing that would get the rivalry cranking up again, and that's if we could knock them out of the... Uh, title in the SEC East. So this has kind of been a journey, you know, for us, and the culmination of the journey is, is, is kind of wrapped into this football game. And Steve Berline joins me. It has been a journey for both Tennessee and Kentucky. What happens today, though, is so much is on the line, and, and it, you, know, you have to look at it. It's an opportunity to go to the SEC title game for Tennessee, but they have to get through Kentucky first, plain and simple. Well, this is legitimately a big game, Craig, and I've played in a lot of big games in my career, Super Bowl being one of them, and I can tell you honestly, these players right now, they've been dreaming about playing in this game since they were little boys. All of us did. Today is the day they get to pay it off one way or the other. They're excited, but man, does it mean an awful lot. Yes, it does. Two senior quarterbacks on the field today. They've got great arms, and what they do best, they throw touchdowns. They do throw touchdowns. The ball is going to be in the air. There's going to be all kinds of fireworks going on, and it, it starts with the Tennessee Volunteers and Eric Ains. This is a guy, tremendous prospect in the NFL. This guy can do everything. He's smart. He's big. He's strong. He can make all the throws. But on the other side of the field, Kentucky Wildcats have a man of their own named Andre Woodson. This is a guy who really has jumped into the spotlight as one of the very best college quarterbacks in the country. Some saying a top 10 pick. I agree with that. He's a Weather today in Lexington, Kentucky, 45 degrees. Wind will not play a factor, and the forecast is for partly cloudy sky. Tennessee has won 22 in a row against Kentucky. The last time the Wildcats won, well, the year was 1984, and Ronald Reagan 
within the White House. You can experience SEC college football today on CBS, brought to you in high definition by Sony. Well, Tennessee has won the toss and has chosen to receive. Tennessee, 19th ranked in the country, coming off an incredible win against Vanderbilt last week, a 16-point fourth quarter. Kentucky did struggle in that loss to Georgia, 24 to 13. So here we go, Commonwealth Stadium in its 35th season and a sellout crowd. Maste will kick it away. And we are underway in Lexington. Heading towards the near sideline, out of bounds, and they'll mark it with a flag at the 12-yard line. Kentucky, ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. So Eric Ainge and Tennessee will start at the 35-yard line. Eric 24-9 as a starter at Tennessee. Let's check out the offensive line. It includes three sophomores and two juniors. They've allowed only three sacks. That's the best in college football. Backs and receivers, everyone gets a hand on the football in this Tennessee offense. Arian Foster just 11 yards shy of 1,000 yards on the season. So Ainge under center on first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Play action, throws back across the field, and the ball is right on the button. Arian Foster at the 20, the 15. Foster may go at the 5. Touchdown, Tennessee! <laughs> 65 yards on the opening play in Lexington. <laughs> This is classic, it's just a straight fake handoff. It's a bootleg, but what happened? Kentucky completely forgot about the guy that Eric Ainge faked the handoff to. That's Arian Foster down the left sideline. Give credit to the Tennessee coaches. They saw something on film where they realized Kentucky kind of gets caught up in the action. Arian Foster, nobody within 20 yards of him. What a way to start the ball game. Unbelievable, 65 yards, second touchdown receiving for Foster and Daniel Lincoln, who's hit 42 of 43 PATs, kicks it through the uprights. 65 yards to start this game. First play in Lexington, Arian Foster, 65 yards, and Tennessee leads by seven on CBS. Well, already it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. Well, Craig, Craig, what? I mean, look at the action. All the action going left, and watch the Kentucky Wildcats. You're going to see when we freeze it right here. All of the Kentucky Wildcats are looking this way. Nobody sees Arian Foster down the left sideline right there. It's about as easy as it gets. But still, I'll tell you what, Craig, one of the hardest things to do is catch and throw a pass when you're that wide open. Tennessee executed that play to perfection, and it results in a touchdown. They immediately take control of this ball game, and Arian Foster knows that's very important when you're away. 16 seconds off the clock. Tennessee has now scored a touchdown, Steve, on seven of their 12 opening drives this season. And that one, I don't believe most of the folks dressed in blue were even in their seats to see that one. Well, heck, we were barely in our seats. <laughs> 65 yards to open. Britton Colquitt has it teed up at the 30-yard line. Raphael Little and Derek Locke are set to receive for Kentucky. Good kick by Colquitt. And it is taken down at the 15-yard line. That's Burton who goes down at the 15-yard line. Well, the quarterback for Kentucky, the senior, Andre Woodson, thrown for nearly 3,000 yards, 30 touchdowns on the season. O-line is strong up the middle behind the seniors of Eric Scott and Jason Leisure. And the backs and receivers, Steve, I'll tell you, they provide many weapons for Woodson. Keenan Burton and Steve Johnson have combined for 16 touchdowns this season. Yeah, you know, Craig, the leading receiver for Kentucky only has 51 catches, but you got four or five well, guys right. over well, 40, right. so the ball does get spread around as well as anybody in the country. And Woodson will set up the first play from the shotgun. A little pitch out, Raphael Little. Chased down from behind and dropped at the 15-yard line. Good pursuit 
Mayo, the middle linebacker. Defensively for Tennessee, and the Volunteers like to rotate that defensive front. Xavier Mitchell anchors the starting four. Linebackers all about speed. Rico McCoy, Mayo, the average over eight tackles a ball game. The secondary is young, led by the freshman corner, Brent Vinson, and the strong safety, Eric Berry. A loss of one on the shovel out to Raphael Littles. That brings up second down and 11. Only a minute into the first quarter and already Tennessee with that 65 yard touchdown as Woodson sets up, throws, up and over the middle. And that ball is incomplete. Now there's a flag down at the 30 and another one down at the 40 yard line. Ryan Carl, the linebacker, was out on coverage and got a piece or a bump on Keenan Burton. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt Ryan Carl up the field that far down the field trying to cover Keenan Burton that far away from the quarterback. That ball's in the air a long time. He knew he was in trouble just to stay up with Burton, and he was hanging on him a little bit as they started to go down. He was definitely hanging on Burton's back. Ten wagers with the call. Last interference, number 39 on the defense. Penalty 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic. First Automatic down. first down, and Steve Carl gives up three inches to Keenan Burton. Yeah, I don't really know what they have. Ryan Carl hanging down the field that far. One-on-one -on -one coverage with Keenan Burton, and you're going to see what Tennessee wants to do also is find a way to get to Andre Woodson. That three or four guys ready to say hello to him right there on the first play of the game, first pass play of the game for Kentucky. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. Quick throw to the near side. Incomplete. And Steve, let's go above the line. Well, when Kentucky has the ball, they have to remember it is not a sprint. This is a quick scoring team. But against Tennessee, even though they're down seven, keep your patience. Run your offense. Don't get carried away trying to make too much happen too soon. Now, Tennessee on defense, do not give up the big play. Make Woodson play four quarters. Make him make decisions all day long. Try and keep him in the pocket. Don't give him a chance to beat you quick. Quick hitter, Little, off the left side, maybe a yard to the 32-yard line. By the way, you look very good with the Golden Dome of Notre Dame. Yeah, and about, uh, oh, I don't know, 25, 30 pounds less on the frame, too. <laughs> that always helps. Sellout crowd, Commonwealth Stadium, 67,606. And what's amazing, it's the third largest city in Kentucky on a Saturday afternoon. A chilly Saturday afternoon at that. Third down and eight, shotgun, Andre Woodson. Long snap count. Pressure from the corner, Woodson fires it up. And incomplete. Incomplete the call. Dickie Lyons, Jr., the intended receiver, and that brings up fourth down and eight. You know, this is an area, too, where Kentucky is the number two team in the ball SEC ball in third ball. down conversions, Craig, converting almost over 48%. Last week against Georgia, when they really struggled, they were 5 of 16. Very uncharacteristic for them, and today, right away, they're facing third and long, and they don't convert. Mass Day back to punt. And Dennis Rogan back to receive inside his own 30-yard line. Massey averaging 40 and a half yards per kick this season. And ha high, high hanger. Terrific kick. Rogan takes it at the 30 and has dropped at the 35-yard line. Dangerous return. Rogan a pick up a five on the punt. A 37-yard kick and a five-yard return. Tennessee with the early 7-0 lead here in Lexington on CBS. Well, Steve, the longest win streaks in college football belongs to Tennessee over Kentucky. 22 consecutive wins dating back to 1984. And that, that just became the leading streak in the country because uh, my alma mater, unfortunately, lost to, to Navy for the first time in about 44 years. So uh, the proud owners of this streak are playing here in front of us today. Now 22 straight games, Tennessee over Kentucky. 12.51 to play after that early touchdown. And Arian Foster scrambles and pushes for an extra yard or two up to the 38-yard line. 
And we look at Kentucky on the defensive end. That front likes to apply pressure to Ainge. Jeremy Jarman ranks number two in the SEC. Nine sacks on the season. The linebackers simply said it's two words. Wesley Woodyard averages over 10 stops a game. Hey, no one's better in the SEC. And the secondary is young. Three sophomores and the senior strong safety in Roger Williams. Tennessee will play with multiple sets. This from the eye formation. Second back through. And Foster powering past the 40 to the 41-yard line. And Steve, let's go back above the line. Well, for Tennessee, it's been a struggle all year on the road. One and three on the road. The, the Volunteers have got to become road warriors. And the way to do it is to come out and score quick. But get your confidence up and really establish the mentality you can be a great offensive team. For Kentucky on defense, they got to get to, to Mr. Ainge in the backfield. Greeting, Mr. Ainge. You've got to find a way to get to him. He's only sacked three times the whole year, but you've got to find a way, not necessarily to sack him, but to get in his face and make him think about you because that really does affect his effectiveness. Play clock down to four, down to three. Tennessee gets the snap off. Ains throws to the far side. A little pitch and catch. It's caught. And Josh Briscoe, the junior, first down Tennessee. We send you now to New York for a Liberty Mutual update. Timmy. All right, Craig, in a game that does impact the ACC championship matchup next week, Sean Glennon goes 39 yards to Eddie Royal. These two are high school teammates. Royal with five catches for 132 yards on the day. 20 to 14 Hokies at the break. Craig. Well, the winner earns that trip to the Dr. Pepper ACC championship game, Virginia Tech and Virginia. Back under center goes Ainge after the pickup of 19 yards. Oh, baby. Hello, Mr. Foster. Jeremy Jarman put the helmet right on the numbers of Foster number 27. Well, that was just a tremendous play by the sophomore defensive end. Jeremy Jarman almost looked like he knew exactly what the play was. I know for a fact he was not blocked by anybody, Craig. You're going to see he's on the shooting in right from the right side there, almost like uh, the right tackle. Ramon Foster and Jock McClendon, they almost both assumed that the other guy had him and neither one of them took him. Jarman from Collierville, Tennessee, said, you know what, I've always, always been a Kentucky or Memphis fan. I bleed blue, that ball was tipped incomplete, and the intended receiver was Foster. That stops the clock with 10.22 to play first quarter. And you know, Craig, that was, that was one thing that we noticed looking at film, and it, I really spent a lot of time studying it. When, when the opposing defense gets people in Ainge's face, and that right there was a screen pass, so it was by design that they had some pressure coming through. But whenever he's got people in his face, his accuracy really starts to go downhill. From the shotgun on third down and 14. Ainge now will walk up. Got a little Peyton Manning in his blood. Ainge walks up and walks back. With four on the play clock, takes a snap with three. Fires over the middle. And Lucas Taylor with a tough catch at the 35-yard line of Kentucky and short of the first down. Well, by the same token, Craig, when you let Eric Ainge in his big six-foot-six six frame stand back in the pocket with a clear lane, he's going to he'll, he'll, he'll tear you apart every single week. He's going to make those throws in his sleep. You've got to find a way to do something to prevent him from seeing the whole field. And we're going to get an early gamble by Phil Fulmer right here, fourth and four. And Tennessee deciding to go for it. Now the Volunteers are 8 of 13 on fourth down conversions this season. And they let that play clock run. Fourth and four. Ames takes the snap for two. Throws it to the flat. It's caught. Foster upended at the 35-yard line. So the gamble does not pay off. Kentucky will take the ball on downs. And Lindley, the corner, with a great, great tackle, took the legs out of Foster before he could turn that corner. A uh, super job of disciplined defense by the Kentucky Wildcats. Eric Ainge told us that's their biggest asset is they are so disciplined. They let him throw that short one, came up and made the tackle. Well, just a really good job by the Kentucky defense. Real good discipline. You'll see they drop back into their zones nice and softly and let 
Arian Foster catch that ball, and you saw Trevard Lindley and Calvin Harrison, number 33, coming over and making the play, keeping the ball in front of them, not getting caught up in the situation, remembering their assignments, and then making the play. Second offensive series for Kentucky. Pressure. Woodson swings out of trouble, still gets that ball away incomplete at the 35-yard line. Robert Ayers bringing the, uh, the pressure on Andre Woodson. What's in 63% completion percentage this season for the senior from Ratcliffe, Kentucky. And you know, if Tennessee can keep that pressure on all day, that'd be great. They, they're one of the worst teams as far as sacks in the SEC this year, only 14 sacks on the season, but they've got tremendous athletes. They're always known for tremendous pressure up front. They can keep that pressure on Woodson. That'll help out tremendously. Woodson 0 for 3, first completion at the 42-yard line, first for, uh, close to a first down. And Woodson, a great story. The senior changed his entire approach to this game thanks to Randy Sanders, the, the quarterback coach who came over from Tennessee. How about this, Steve? Offered a scholarship while he was in the ninth grade. Yeah. Ninth grade offering him a scholarship, and that was the only scholarship he was offered until well into his senior year. First and ten, Kentucky. Woodson surveys the volunteer defense. Hand off straight up the gut. Nice whole little breakthrough. The little man runs big. And another first down inside Tennessee territory at the 42 and a half yard line. Yeah, the little man does a great job getting through the cracks for a big run right here. You see the down blocks by Justin Jeffries and Jason Leisure. The right side creates a big gap, a big, big hole for the little man to get through right through there and I'll tell you get him a, a lane like that he's going to hit it quick and make you pay the price. Three carries 14 yards for little as he closes in on 800 yards rushing this season first and 10 back to back first downs for the Wildcats again the quick hit it. up the middle goes Grinner the fullback to the 33 yard line and the strong safety Eric Berry the freshman who leads all SEC freshmen in tackles Brought down Grinner. And Maurice Grinner not going to get the ball too many times, but a good job early establishing him by Rich Brooks and his staff. Joker Phillips, the offensive coordinator, give him the ball early, make Tennessee respect him. That'll open up things on the outside for Rafael Little in the passing game as this game develops. As Steve Kentucky trying to reestablish the ground game, the last four ball games averaging 86 yards on the ground and throughout the season 160. So way off their mark over the last month of the season. Second down and short. Back to the ground. One hop, in and out, and Little will push forward and another first down for the Wildcats at the 31-yard line. You know, we talk about the woes on the ground for Kentucky. How about the defensive troubles for Tennessee? Yeah, look, look at that. You look at the Cal, Florida, and Alabama games. A lot of big plays. Obviously, the touchdowns result from that, but look at the rushing yards at the bottom. 230 versus Cal, 255 versus Florida and almost 150 against Alabama. Not acceptable. Going around the corner, but not, not a lot of yards. As little. Looked like uh, Woodson was hesitant, but boxed in a little bit to, to shovel, the, plus that, shovel past that ball out to, to the near side. Well, it was almost a, a little bit like an option, Craig, but I, I think he might have been told to pitch that ball because he really didn't come down the line very far. We got a player down. And the right tackle, Justin Jeffries, sophomore from Louisville, is up quickly. And a big man at 6'6", 310. And Brad Durham, a freshman, who backs up Jeffries now, checks in for Kentucky at that right tackle spot. But Craig, we remember in our conversations with Joker Phillips and Rich Brooks, one of the things they felt was a problem with their running game was that they were they had become kind of a finesse team the last several weeks as opposed to early in the season a power physical running team they wanted to try and get back to it and they're doing a good job of it today well back is little seventh play of this drive second down and six whoa, whoa. Kentucky down by seven Woodson little shovel pass Lions comes around from the uh, wide receiver spot and leans for a tough yard to the 27 yard line you know, again, that's back-to-back -back pitches that Woodson just doesn't look comfortable well, to me. It's actually the third one of the game so far. They did one backed up in their own end zone too earlier, Craig. And 
they're, they're, I, I like the creativity that they're showing, but a lot of times you can almost outthink yourself a little bit trying to get too creative. You're doing a great job running the football right at them right now. Try and set the tone, set the tempo that it's going to be a physical style running game coming right at you all day. Then you can add those little creative things as you go along. Third down and six, Kentucky 49% on third down conversions this year, eighth best in college football. Rolling out, Woodson pressured and taken down back at the 42 yard line. Elix Wilson, the middle linebacker, flew in and threw down Woodson. Well, I'll tell you what, if it wasn't Elix Wilson, he was going to get blindsided from the back by Ben Martin coming off the edge right down here in the bottom. Actually, no, that's not Ben Martin. That was that was Kev Nevin McKenzie coming from the backside. But you're going to see almost what you'd call a jailbreak right there. We had plenty of guys coming to make the tackle on Andre Woodson. If it would have been McKenzie coming from behind, I really think that would have been a fumble because Woodson would have had no chance to see it coming. It's almost better that he got hit in front of him. Mass Day will try to punch this ball inside the 10-yard line, angles to the corner. Dennis Rogan takes a look, and it bounces out at the 18-yard line. So the pooch kick forces Tennessee back inside their own 20-yard line. 6.05 to play in the quarter, and the Volunteers will have it up by 7 when we come back to Lexington. Welcome back, sold out. Commonwealth Stadium, Lexington, Kentucky. And the Wildcats with 18 rush yards early. Tennessee held to just two. And Tennessee up by seven. And the football at their own 13-yard line. 6.05 to play, first quarter. Hardesty, first carry of the day. Dropped at the 20-yard line, a pickup of three. And the CBS Sports Store is the perfect place to save big on gifts for all the sports fans in your life this holiday season. Today only, you can save 20% on all officially licensed NCAA jerseys and caps. Get it now at cbssportsstore.com. And Steve, I will pass along my wish list to you at halftime. Yeah, you know what? You got it. For all you do for me, you got whatever you want. 20% off today on the boot. Goes Ainge, throws it out, and it's caught by the big man. The tight end caught him. And caught him, breaks a tackle at midfield. Watch him run. Caught him, the senior, into the 20-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, it's again another bootleg. Tennessee taking advantage of the aggressiveness of the Kentucky defense. Not too disciplined on two plays, two big plays by the Tennessee Volunteers. Doesn't make any sense that a simple play like that, Brad Cottom can get that wide open and make such a huge gain on such a simple play, a play that every team has in their playbook. Cottom, a senior, has a brother who's a sophomore who also plays tight end, Jeff Cottom. And both stand 6'8". Brad goes 270, his brother 260. And Tennessee in business once again. Two big plays here in the opening quarter. Ontario Hardesty off the left side, inside the 20-yard line. And for Tennessee, it's very simple. You win today, and Tennessee clinches the SEC East. They'll head to Atlanta to play LSU for the championship, and they have the, they have the tie bait breaker. And because, see, we were in Knoxville when Tennessee turned their season around against Georgia. And I'll tell you what, that Georgia team is not the same team anymore. They are as good as anybody right now, playing as well as anybody in the country right now. I don't know who LSU would rather face because Tennessee looks pretty good right now. They've been hot as well. Three wide receivers set second down. And a throw near side, it's caught. Touchdown, Taylor broke a tackle of E.J. Adams. And Tennessee takes a 13-0 lead. Just a tremendous executed play by Eric Ainge and Lucas Taylor. Watch right here. This is by design. Ainge and Taylor both know that if the corner is overplaying him, E.J. Adams is overplaying him over the top, that's going to be a back shoulder throw by design. Great communication, great decision making on both the part of Lucas Taylor and Eric Ainge. That's how you score touchdowns. That's exactly how you draw it up in the game, in the in the in the film room when you're sitting there talking about those things. Eric Ainge tosses his 21st touchdown throw of the season, fifth touchdown reception for Lucas. Daniel Lincoln 
with the extra point. And one more time, Taylor breaks the tackle and goes 18 yards. And Tennessee leads on the road by 14. Touchdowns on the season. So far in this game, Steve, you like these numbers, my friend. You old, you're, uh, the old quarterback, 6 of 7, 171 yards in the first quarter. And, and I'll tell you what, it's been pretty darn easy for Tennessee. And that's not taking anything away from Eric Ainge. He's made some very good throws as well. But the big plays to Cottom and the early, the first play of the game to Arian Foster, tremendous. And then, of course, the strike to Lucas Taylor that was right on the money. Goal quit. A short kick at the 10-yard line. Burton takes it for Kentucky at the 25. Cuts and is taken down at the 32, maybe the 33-yard line. Well, it's been a little bit of a aberration for the, the Kentucky offense so far. They're not used to getting this guy hit as much. Tennessee's been finding a way to, to get to the quarterback back there in the backfield. Woodson has not had a chance to set up and make plays up the field. And as stated earlier, the Tennessee defense has not done a good job this year generating pressure. Today's a different story so far. So Kentucky with the football down by two touchdowns. And under center goes Woodson. A little fumble on the exchange, a little. Pulls it in, tries the far side, and is chased down after a gain of two. A tremendous play by Gerard Mayo coming from the backside, hurtling over the top of a down Kentucky lineman and then making the play over the top. You know, John Chavis, the uh, defensive coordinator for Tennessee, told us that he really believes that, that both Gerard Mayo and Rico McCoy, number five, Linebackers for Tennessee are really legitimate All-American guys and should be should be All-Americans. Well, McCoy averaging over eight tackles a ball game. Mayo eight and a half stops per game. Had a career high 15 tackles last week in that comeback win over Vanderbilt. Once again, Rafael Little working the short side of the field, bumped out of bounds at the 37-yard line. John Connors trying to break a little outside. And see, going back to this Tennessee defense, and you talk about John Chavis, uh, the defensive coordinator. These are not what you call prototype linebackers. McCoy goes 215, Mayo 230, Ryan Carl 218. He recruits speed, not particularly size. Speed, and that's the way that college football and the NFL, in reality, have gone. They've gone more to speed and, and uh, explosive power as opposed to just girth and weight and that kind of power. It's a totally different game now. Third down at six for Kentucky. Little tried it up the middle, scoops outside and takes a hit on the pads at the 40-yard line, and Tennessee is fired up on both sides of the football. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I, I'm impressed with Kentucky, how they're sticking with their game plan, and even though they're down 14, it's still the first quarter, but to run the ball on third and seven, third and six or seven yards like they did right there, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You ran it on first down, ran it on second down. You've got to have a, a few plays in your playbook to get the ball and convert that first down as opposed to just handing it and, and, and getting two yards and then having to put your putter back out there on the field. Mass day back to punt at the, his own 25-yard line. Dennis Rogan awaits at the 20. High, high hanger. And Rogan pedals back, takes that ball at the 17, heads up the sideline, stood up and dropped at the 30. Well, time now for an SEC moment presented by Sonic. The year was 2002. Kentucky could taste victory, but LSU had other ideas and is what is known as the Bluegrass Miracle. Randall stops, throws it as far as he can. No miracle in Baton Rouge last night. Triple overtime loss to a one man named McFadden and the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Well, I'll tell you what, every week is something new and exciting. You gotta love it. Back comes Foster on the ground, puts out a stiff arm, turns the corner and to the 40 yard line. Let's go back to New York for a college football update. Here's Tim Brando. All right, guys, Miami is on the board against Boston College. Kyle Wright hits Ryan Hill, a 23-yard touchdown toss. B.C. hasn't beaten Miami since the Flutie Miracle. That was 84. It's been that long since Kentucky has beaten Tennessee in your game, fellas. Indeed, Mr. Brando and Mr. Reagan was in the White House. How about the Hurricanes seeking their 10th consecutive 
bowl eligible season, but they need a win today against BC. On first down, Ains throws it up over the top. Nearly a one-handed grab. Did he get it? I think he pulled it in. Craig. Pulled it in. He did at the 37-yard line. Chris Brown somehow tipped that ball back to himself and pulls down another big play for Tennessee. Well, this is a great play here again. You're going to see a, a, a tremendous read by Eric Ains. You see Chris Brown, number 28, right there, selling out completely and, and still have. Ooh, oh, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that ball looked like it definitely hit the ground. They, they will review that. Uh, I think we're going to be told right now. Yeah, and it, it, as great an effort as that was by Chris Brown, I think that one might be overturned. It was a very well designed, very well executed play. You're going to see as he's stretching out there the presence that he has to look up and find that ball. But let's see if it touches the ground. It looks, did. Looks like it touched the ground. That's a great angle. Before he had control of it, and and that they're looking for control. If he could have had his hand underneath that ball before it hit the ground, then I, I think they wouldn't have been able to overturn it. But you can see that angle right there shows pretty clearly that it does hit the ground. Now, re remember now, it does have to be conclusive that it was the wrong call ruled on the field. And I, I think, in my opinion, that's pretty conclusive. As great an effort as it was by Chris Brown, I think that this ball does touch the ground before he has control of it. His hand is on the side of the ball. You can see right there. Ball is out. Right there. No that possession. That ball is, is touching the ground. Chris Brown is great of an athlete as he is, unable to pull that ball down, but a terrific effort. This guy knows every formation in the Tennessee offense. He plays the tight end. He plays slot. He plays running back. In fact, he told us, great young man, by the way, I know as much as Eric Ainge about this uh, Tennessee offense. He said he, know, he, he basically has to think like a quarterback because they do put him in the backfield. He's got to be a lead blocker. They flex him out wide. He's a receiver. They play him in a conventional tight end position as well. He poses a lot of matchup problems for the opposing defense because you, you, if you put a linebacker on him, he's too good an athlete for a lot, most linebackers to run with. The ruling on the field is reversed. Video evidence clearly shows Christian incomplete pass. Second down at the previous spot. So incomplete is the call after Penn Wagers reviewed and I think there was no question what we saw, those angles. It was a terrific effort, but the ball went through his hands and hit the ground uh, before possession. It, it did, and it, and it hate to take away such a great effort, but the, the right call was made right there. Well, the ball is back at the 41 and a half yard line, brings up second down at 10. Kentucky crowd on their feet. Wildcats are down 14 early here in the first quarter with 2.46 to play. Ainge barks out the, the call. Foster finds one, takes a shot near sideline, and is driven out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Steve, how about this drive chart? This is a dream for any offensive coordinator in the country. You start at your 35, bang, 65 yards, touchdown. You do have to give it up on downs your second time, but uh, you start on your 17, four plays, you're in the, you're in the end zone. Boom, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty darn impressive if you're a head coach you'll take those first three drives anytime even the second drive where they had to punt seven plays they picked up a couple first downs you're not going to score every time unfortunately that's that's a pretty good start to the ball game there now a four wide receiver set and now they shift as Ainge went from shotgun to center he has four on the play clock down to three down to two down to one and Tennessee calls timeout That was good presence by Josh Briscoe, number 81, the wide receiver, realizing that Ainge was not going to get the play in. When we come back, Tennessee up 14 to nothing. Well, a cloudy, cool day in Lexington with a packed house. Commonwealth Stadium. Tennessee, after the timeout, looking at third down and five from their own 47-yard line. Tennessee with a 14-0 lead. Kentucky will rush three, and they throw the flat complete. Once again, Taylor spins out of the trouble to the 30-yard line. 
Let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Tim. Craig and Steve, you could say Darren McFadden laid down the gauntlet yesterday. 206 yards in the win over top-ranked LSU. But quarterback is the marquee position in football. Tebow, of course, who you'll see later in the 2020 club, runs and passes. And Colt Brennan set a new NCAA touchdown passing record. I think uh, McFadden did himself, uh, won himself some votes last night, national television here on CBS, and that thrilling triple overtime win in Baton Rouge. Pressure, and Ames throws it away. Now you talk about uh, McFadden, but also Missouri and Kansas, uh, their quarterbacks, Daniel and Reesing, they will play tonight in Kansas City, oh, Kansas City on oh, Arrowhead. And don't forget uh, Mr. White at West Virginia. Other Heisman hopefuls, and I think tonight's game in Kansas City will be uh, will play big for Daniel and Reesing. No doubt about it. Now, those two guys in a position that no one would have ever expected going into the season, and then of course Pat White. West Virginia, they're number four in the country in the BCS poll. So you got the two, three, and four teams in the BCS. Their quarterbacks have an outstanding years. All of them very deserving of the attention they're getting. Well, Daniel and Reesing have combined for 60 touchdown throws this year. That ball short on the throw by Ainge, and it goes incomplete to Briscoe. Oh, the Heisman race. It's been hot. You know, McFadden finished strong last year, but not quite. I think last night's game, he's going to be tough to dethrone. Tebow, of course, uh, right in the right in the mix of it as well for Florida. Well, you, you know, Tim Tim Tebow is a very unique quarterback in many, many ways, in so many ways. But, but Darren McFadden, I think, is the most dangerous player in all of college football. They've stumbled a couple times this year, but, but that guy is legitimate, and he's going to be the first pick in the draft whenever he decides to come out. He is a tremendous football player. Tennessee again looking at the play clock down to three, down to two. Ames takes a snap with one, throws it a flat on a dart at the 35. It's Foster and dances for about a pickup of maybe one, maybe two Hold to out, the 30-yard line. Well, again, we see a great example of the Kentucky discipline on the outside, allowing Ames to complete the short pass to somebody underneath. That time it was Arian Foster, the running back, then coming up and really being in good position to make the tackles. The difference in this ball game, Craig, so far is the fact that there have been two plays that Kentucky has lost their discipline and Tennessee has made them pay big time. Once with a touchdown, the other time with about a 65-yard pass to Cottom, the tight end. That is why this game is 14 to nothing right now. Daniel Lincoln in to try a field goal of 47 yards, his longest this season, 48. It just missed. Just, just missed from 47 yards. Air's a little heavy today it in is, Lexington. It is. I don't think Lincoln really caught that thing as well as he would have liked to. I think he's definitely got the range to make that kick. He just didn't hit it real solid. His timing might have been off a little bit, but you're going to see when you look at it, it looks pretty good all the way. I, I don't know exactly what the problem is, but it ends up being just a little bit short. It was right down the middle. So Kentucky gets good field position, position as a result. Down by 14, shotgun as Woodson hands it off. And up the middle, Derek Locke, the freshman out of Hugo, Oklahoma, picks up two yards. Locke is a terrific story. Signed on, Steve, to run track. And now he's playing football. He's a terrific 100-meter man, long jumper. How about these numbers last year at Hugo High School? 51 touchdowns. 3,200 yards rushing. <laughs> That's a career. Good protection as Woodson fires, oh. and it's incomplete at the 45-yard line, and Eric Berry nearly had his fifth pick of the year. Yeah, and this Eric Berry, he, he is something else. This, this true freshman coming in, he's got four interceptions on the season, 207 return yards, 96 of them coming against Tim Tebow and the Florida Gators. Uh, on one return, but you can see the most in the NCAA. This guy is a playmaker. The coaches knew from the very first day he set foot on campus that this guy was ready to play, and he's proven himself to his teammates. They, play, they say they've never seen a freshman with better work ethic or more prepared to play than this kid. Ran back a pick 96 yards against the Gators earlier this season. Woodson throws in traffic. It's caught at the 41-yard line to Dickey Lyons, Jr. 
and that will move the chains for Kentucky. Woodson's is only his second completion here in the quarter. Yeah, you know, you really do not get the feel that Kentucky has any real rhythm in their passing game. I think they've been running the ball pretty effectively, but they, their timing is off. The rhythm is not there. They've got to find a way to get it back. First and 10 Wildcats from the eye. First back through plows for about three. And Maurice Grinter will make it second down and a call it seven. By the way, that last pass caught by Lions becomes the 11th player in Wildcat history with 100 career receptions. Final seconds of the opening quarter winding down in Lexington. Big touchdown by Foster. First play of the game for Tennessee. Taylor from 18 yards. And it's 14-0 after one quarter. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Tennessee barking there in the opening quarter put 14 points on the board and Tennessee looks very focused of course what of course what is at stake a trip to the SEC championship next week in Atlanta Tennessee wins they're in if they lose Georgia goes to Atlanta Steve to play LSU very simple doesn't get any bigger than this first play of the second quarter Woodson on the keeper and picks up maybe two three yards Craig Bullard back, back along with Steve Berline as we start the second quarter. The first quarter just dominated by Eric Ainge over Andre Woodson. 194 yards passing in that opening quarter. Two big plays, the difference. Yeah, and to only 19 yards passing by Kentucky. Who would have thought that? I mean, it's amazing. Both these teams have so much at stake. Kentucky coming in saying, hey, this is not about the Tennessee Volunteers and what's at stake for them. It's about us and what's at stake for us to go out on a, as a senior class and make a statement, get to a big bowl game. We've got to win this game. Well, they better start playing some better football offensively if they're going to win this game. Tennessee brings pressure. Woodson able to fire that ball over the middle. Caught for a first down. Jacob Tammy, 45th reception of the season. Mayo brought the heat and put the hurt on Woodson. Andre able to stay in that pocket just long enough to find Tammy. It was actually, I think, Robert Ayers coming off the side, Craig, right there. Boom, number 91 meeting him in the backfield. That's a big boy coming with a full head of steam. Tremendous play in Woodson. He's not getting comfortable back there because of the pressure coming from Tennessee. First and 10, Kentucky. Quick hitter up the middle. One tackle is broken to the 40-yard line. And it's Grinter who has pushed down a couple of tough runs here in the first half. Hefney the, the tackle. The senior free safety. So it's a five-yard pickup. And all of a sudden, Kentucky looks to be moving the ball here, Steve, to start quarter number two in Lexington. Down by 14. Back under center goes Woodson. Takes a glance at that Tennessee defense. Up the middle, little spin, little, trying to work his way for an extra yard. And inside the 40 to the 39 yard line, Eric Berry put the helmet on little. Yeah, this Tennessee defense is playing very physical today so far. They're, they're, they're winning the battles up front in the trenches. And John Chavis has got to be pretty excited about what he's seeing so far. This is a very explosive. Kentucky offensive ball club that has not been able to figure out how to move the ball consistently. The plays that have been made, Andre Woodson liked that throw two throws ago where he made a tremendous throw and it was a great catch, but he took a shot as a as payment for getting that ball out of there. And, so. your, and your point, Steve, this uh, this Kentucky offense scores 35 and a half points a ball game. That's fourth best in the SEC. And so far, it's a shutout. Through the first quarter. Yeah, and Kentucky got a timeout called just before the snap of that ball. Timeout, Kentucky. First timeout of the half. Rich Brooks can't be too excited about what he sees so far. In his fifth year, down by 14 on his home field in Lexington. Monday on CBS, How I Met Your Mother goes where no other comedy has gone before. The Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Heidi Klum guest stars on an all-new How I Met Your Mother, Monday at 8, 7 central on CBS. 
Ninth play of this drive coming up. And Kentucky looking at third down and four, just inside the 40-yard line of Tennessee. Once again, Woodson changing it up at the line of scrimmage, and the play clock runs down to two, able to get it away. Raphael Little cuts it to the far side, breaks another tackle, first down, Wildcats. And Kentucky, big play. And this drive will continue first and 10. Watch this cut, Craig, in the backfield by Raphael Little. Look how quickly he has to make this move. Boom, right there. Two guys, Ryan Carl overrunning it, as well as Xavier Mitchell. And this guy's got the ability to accelerate. Watch this right away. He sees it coming. Whoa, got to go back to the left. And then does a great job bouncing it outside, using his blocker on the outside. That was... Steve Johnson, number 13, coming in, allowing him to get around that corner for the first down. Pick up a seven. Woodson feels pressure. Fires near side, wide open, and the catch is pulled down by Steve Johnson. Johnson, nine touchdown receptions on the season and hauls in his 49th catch of the year. And I'll tell you what, the hits that Andre Woodson has taken on a regular basis, those are going to pay off uh, for Tennessee as this game goes along. He is not able to stand back there and deliver the ball like he's used to. I mean, that one right there, another one, he, he, he stood in there strong, delivered a strike, but he's, he's paying the price every time. Well, he's been sacked once, hurried twice, knocked down three times, and still over 12 minutes to play in the first half from the I formation. First and 10, Kentucky in the blue zone. Looks one way, looks the other, has a man. Touchdown, Kentucky! Steve Johnson's drive. Back-to-back -back grabs, and Johnson pulls down his 10th touchdown of the year. And a huge block on the third down conversion, but right there, that's the one that's going to make the highlight film. Tremendous throw and catch. Andre Woodson saw Man-to-man -man coverage had no doubt where he's going with that football and then delivered beautifully for the first payoff the, of the day for the Kentucky Wildcats. Woodson just passed Tim Couch for second place all time on Kentucky's total offensive yards list. 8,185. 17-yard touchdown for Steve Johnson. Drops it. Man coverage. Touchdown, Kentucky back in it. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Well, this is a quarterback's dream right here. You're going to see one, two, three Tennessee defenders lined up man-to-man. -man. You're going to see a straight fade up the sideline, fades across the board, and a perfect execution by Andre Woodson to Steve Johnson exactly what a quarterback's supposed to do use his eyes he looked to the right to pull the free safety that way and then delivers a beautiful ball over the top for the touchdown and to get uh, the kentucky wildcats back into this ball game yeah kentucky won 11 plays they marched 70 yards less than four minutes on the clock and the difference of course woodson on that drive after some early struggles went four or five for 49 yards capped off by that grab by johnson man covered 17 yard touchdown good kick and Rogan will take it at the one-yard line. Right up the gut at the 20, lowers his pads, and taken down at the 25-yard line. Well, Thursday, the Survivor Castaways get a chance to go up against some real kung fu warriors. Don't miss a new Survivor, China. That's Thursday right here on CBS. The question here in Lexington, who survives between Tennessee and Kentucky? Well, we got a little bit of time left to determine that one, but... That touchdown should get this Kentucky crowd back into the ball game. The Kentucky defense trying to get these fans back into it. Now yeah, the first time we've heard the sellout crowd on their feet. Down by seven. Still early in the second quarter. Ainge goes under center. Play action pass. He'll set his feet. Goes up top. And a grabbing dive at the 44-yard line. How about Lucas Taylor stretched way out? But guess what? It's coming back. He stepped out of bounds. The referee dropped his hat. Whenever you see a referee dropping his hat like that, that means that the, the receiver stepped out of bounds. And, and I'll tell you what, he, the pro, he must have been forced out of bounds. That's exactly what the happened. The receiver was pushed out of bounds. 
and it's a big difference. If Lucas Taylor would have gone out of bounds on his own, there's contact. You can see right there, there's a little bit of contact. I'll tell you what, not much. Lucas Taylor got away with that one. If he wasn't forced out of bounds, which I don't think he truly was, that should not have been a completion. Well, the crowd agrees with you. First and 10, Tennessee. A little cut back and a push as Foster picks up five. The free safety, Calvin Harrison, came up to make the tackle. And the point to emphasize on that, though, Greg, is that you might ask, well, why, why was that not reviewed? That is not a reviewable play. That's a determination the referee made that it was a force out and cannot be reviewed. Well, big plays. The storyline here in the first half in Lexington. Tennessee back on the front porch, knocking on the door, leading by a seven. Rodgers and Taylor set up to the far side. Eye formation for Ainge on second down and six. Ainge on the pitch. Here comes Foster, cut back, squares those shoulder pads. Tough to bring down Arian Foster and close to a first down near the 30-yard line. Foster goes 225, 230. You, you are exactly right, Craig. I was just thinking the same thing. When he turns those shoulders and squares up up the field, that pile moves. And that was a great job by the, the right side of that Tennessee offense to to really move out of the Ramon Foster and Jacques McClendon. It was almost like the student body right. Super strong running play off that right side. Well, officials call timeout. They bring the chains on the field. Now, we're sitting right at the 30. And this is a this is going to be a chain link or two. They're giving it to him. By a chain link. By a chain link, yes, sir. First and 10, Tennessee. Arian Foster, only a junior. Twenty eight yards on seven carries a day. He's well over a thousand yards rushing now on the season for Tennessee. Two wide receivers Rodgers and Taylor near side. And we've seen this all day Steve this Eric Ainge goes under center steps back takes a look back at the sideline as they read that Kentucky defense. Play action pass Ainge with protection dumps it off. It's at the 40. And a big, big loss by Tennessee. Wesley Woodyard wrapped up Foster. And that was good pressure by the Kentucky defense for one of the very few times today. And you can see what a difference it makes. Eric Ainge will not take a sack. He's been coached, and he's been told that we would rather have an incomplete pass. Well, the Kentucky defense, they, they think an incomplete pass is pretty good right there. Actually, it was a completed pass for a six-yard loss. Second down and 16. That, that play indicates, basically maps out the reason why Ainge has been dropped only twice, and that offensive line has given up only three sacks on the season. That's exactly right. Big hole. Up the middle, Foster dances, breaks the tackle at the 30, and drops. He'll get back seven yards to the 29 and knocked down by Roger Williams, a strong safety. And you know, Steve Brown, the defensive coordinator for the Kentucky Wildcats, he told us, he said, you know, we're, we're not measuring success pressure-wise by how many sacks we get on Ainge. We feel that if we can fluster him and get him off his rhythm, that he will not respond very well and that we'll get incomplete passes, which is really what we're looking for. There's Steve uh, Brown, the defensive coordinator, middle of your screen. First year as the defensive coordinator through the last four as a DB coach. Shotgun formation, Tennessee 2 of 4 on third downs. It's going to be short as Chris Brown is tackled by Johnny Williams, a strong side linebacker. So Kentucky playing their lanes and very little room for Chris Brown to do his thing. And Mr. Lincoln is going to come back out here. Daniel Lincoln, actually, no, they're not a little, little too far for the field goal. Looks like they're going to punt. It would be about a 46-yard field goal that, that they are going to go with it. Well, Lincoln missed from 47 on the other end of this field late in the first quarter. This is going to be actually a 45-yarder. This will be a 45-yard attempt. Missed from 47. Far hash, high snap, the kick is away. And it floats through from 45 yards. That ball floated in fl slow motion. But a 45-yard kick by Lincoln, and Tennessee builds a 10-point lead. 17-7 in Lexington.
Celebrating 75 years of football in the SEC, let's take you back. The year was 1984, the last time Kentucky beat Tennessee. Wildcats, George Adams ran for 110 yards, two touchdowns as Kentucky upset Tennessee. And Coach Jerry Claiborne was carried into the sunset on that particular day, 22 games ago. 22 long years ago if you're a fan of the blue. And today is the day that you, all the players told us that students on campus, everybody feels that this is the first time that they really have a chance to win this ball game. They belong on the field. They feel like it's really their game if they go out and get it. Cold quick. They'll kick it away from the 30. Angles it to the far side, and it takes a bounce out of bounds. And Burton will let's let it uh, go out of bounds at the 10-yard line. Good decision by the senior Burton to let that ball go out of bounds. Ball comes out to the 35-yard line now. That's a nice return right there. Well, Woodson 0 for 3 to start this game. Since then, 5 of 6, passing for 60 yards and a touchdown. And I'm impressed by how he's doing it, too, because he is standing in there under pressure and taking the hits and delivering that ball. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Re-kick for the yards by the back. Well, so a re-kick, we've seen two bound out of bounds in this ball game. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Kentucky Wildcats have chosen to, uh, to have the re-kick. Maybe they feel like they can do better than get it out to the 35-yard line. We saw earlier on the opening kickoff when Kentucky kicked it out of bounds, Tennessee took the ball at the 35-yard line. Well, they like their two return men in Rogan and Locke, both explosive. They're going to march this ball back at the 25-yard line. So, again, Kentucky is assured at least a good field position as both receivers back just inside the 15-yard line. 8.57 to play first half in Tennessee with a 10-point lead. <laughs> line drive kick. Jeez. Takes a bounce. This one may head out of bounds. It's picked up at the 26-yard line by Burton and wrapped up as he squirms his way to the 40, call it the 38-yard line. And see, one key in this ballgame so far in this first half, Andre Woodson has felt pressure up the middle and from the sides. Yeah, we've been talking about it. You can see Tennessee, again, has not been known this year for the pressure on the quarterback, but today I guarantee you Andre Woodson he right there pleading with the referee. Hey, that was a little bit late, man. Throw the flag. But the bottom line is he knows they're coming. They've already made that very clear to him. Two hurries, three knockdowns, and a sack. Down by 10. Kentucky takes the football at their own 37-yard line. Hand off. Here comes Raphael Little. Turns the corner at the 40 and steps out of bounds. That stops the clock at the 43-yard line. And you know, Craig, sometimes a block doesn't have to be pretty. And right there on around that left side, you had Jacob Tam. T Jacob Tammy tied in on the left side. He was trying to block JT Mapu. And you're going to see right on the left side of your screen right here, he just barely gets a piece of him. And the man's really too big for him to block one-on-one -on -one all over the field. But he did a good job of just holding his ground and getting a piece of him let Little get around the edge. A pick up of five for Rafael Little from Anderson, South Carolina. And there's a flag down. Ten wagers will give us the call. Prior to the snap, ball start. Okay. Offensive lineman, penalty five yards, down on main side. Jacob Tammy, the tight end, and coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman, along with Archie Manny, will get you up to date on all the scores and highlights. Plus, we'll preview the second half of our doubleheader between Florida State and the Florida Gators with Heisman hopeful Tim Tebow. That's all coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, doubleheader day here on CBS. Woodson, under center, checks once again. Scans that Tennessee defense. Quick hitter right up the gut. And Little is tripped up. 
believe Mayo got him on the feet. Hefney was there as well, but uh, just a huge quick hitter, and the seas parted early. Yeah, the, the, ten, the, the Kentucky offensive line is doing a good job of creating those seams for Rafael Little to get up inside. They've done a good job running right at this Tennessee defense all day. They just haven't been converting third downs on a regular basis and, until that last drive where they scored a touchdown. But if they can just convert on third down, they'll get some things going here. Now the Wildcats have made three of their last three third down conversions. They look at third down and five. It's over eight minutes to play. Backside pressure, and Woodson never saw Richard Kemp, Ricardo Kemp, coming. And that, that was just a complete bust by somebody. Kemp coming off the backside. You can see him standing there at the top of your screen. He's coming off that edge, untouched. That's an absolute dream for a defensive player. For some reason, the Kentucky Wildcats had not accounted for them. Now, Kemp is a safety, and in many, many protection schemes, I know for a fact that Andre Woodson, the quarterback, is responsible for the safety. Maybe he got a little bit confused as to what position Kemp was playing. That's the only thing I can think of. He might have had to have been hot on that play instead of thinking he was protected. Mass Day will punt away at the 25-yard line. High hanger and a fair catch. And Rogan has to dive. Loose ball. Oh, and he came up with it. Somehow, he pinned that ball underneath his body. I don't know how he did it. At the 34-yard line, you could hear a <laughs> gasp oh. here in Lexington. 31-yard kick, and that ball just died down off the foot of Mastay. Well, the, the true freshman, Rogan, right there, taking a big gamble. Almost cost his ball club. Tennessee doesn't need that at this point, leading 17-7. Seventeen seven ninth ranked Tennessee over Kentucky and Steve last play the Vols. They dodged some danger Well, Look at this watch the ball hit the ground and it somehow Rogan sat on it Dennis Rogan pinned that ball <laughs> underneath him and he was a Southeastern Conference special teams player of the week last week for his Tremendous returns against Vanderbilt which actually set up the winning score and a couple other scoring drives for the volunteers But boy did he get away with that one right there. That was almost disastrous for the volunteers Ontario Hardesty with the carry, stiff arms his way close to a first down. Lindley, the corner for Kentucky, ran him out of bounds. You look at the comparison between Ainge and Woodson thus far. Ainge 11 of 15, Woodson 5 of 9, but look at the yards. 224 yards passing in the first half for Ainge. Well, the check mark right now goes to Ainge. Obviously, the numbers speak for themselves, but I think Woodson's finding himself a little bit more comfortable out there. Even though he's getting hit under pressure, he's starting to get a little bit more of a rhythm going, and that'll spell for better things, I think, in the second half. Second down and short. In fact, now it's going to be second down and four as Hardesty has dropped. Micah Johnson, the middle linebacker, made the stop. The sophomore on a four, Campbell, Kentucky. But having said that, Craig, you, you're 100% right. Ainge is, is really playing a tremendous football, a, a fantastic football game at this point. I can't fault him for any decisions he's made. And he's, he's delivered the ball on time, on the money all day. Tennessee running that hurry up. Under center. And again, a glance back to the sideline. Third down and two. Age on the rollout. Pressure in trouble. Dumps it. Now that's, again, is a great example of what Ainge does so well. Don't take the sack get rid of it and the reason why this team has only given up three sacks and that's exactly right because that that was a busted play the, the things that go on before the snap with the coaches calling plays and getting him into Ainge he called for a bootleg over to this side and his receivers didn't get the call nobody ran a route on this side and Ainge smartly rounding number 15 which is a loss of down penalty ball be spotted at the spot of the flag well, the, the question was he outside the tackles uh, he might very well have been we have to go back and look at that but maybe it wasn't so smart if he was inside the tackle box but anyway it was going to be fourth down it's a field position thing you can see he's right on that tackle box line. Yeah, he's outside when he let go of it for sure but again that's not reviewable the, re the officials felt that he was still in that tackle box he probably was outside of it good pick up by you but it was really a busted play that got him in that position in the Probably a good decision by Eric Gaines not to risk a turnover, a fumble on the sack. Cole quick inside his 10-yard line. Boots it away. 
good kick. Raphael Little settles underneath of the 35-yard line. Nowhere to run. Maybe a yard, and he'll be taken down at the 37-yard line. Now, well, Monday on CBS, if you really want to know the secrets of the rich and famous, ask the nanny. David Caruso stars in a new episode of Monday night's number one drama, CSI Miami, at 10, 9 central, only on CBS. Well, I see another flag down, Steve Berline, at the 35-yard yeah. line. As you look at Ainge and his protection all season long, only three sacks, 409-yard attempts. Yeah. Coming into this game, average of one every 135 pass attempts. After the play is over, personal foul. Number eight on the receiving team, 15 yards. First down. Well, that will not please Rich Brooks. Oh. Demorio Ford, the personal foul, and that takes uh, the Wildcats back to their own 22. I don't know if Rich Brooks is mad at Demorio Ford or the referee. We'll see. Oh, he's mad oh. at Demorio Ford. Looked like a slap to the face mask yep. of McKenzie. Yep. The second guy always gets nailed. And that's a big blow because that's about a 20-yard swing and field position right there. Handoff, Little, scoots outside, and then taken down at the 27-yard line. Let's get an update on Boston College, Miami. Here's Tim. All right, Craig. First, it's Kyle Wright going with the fade to Sam Shields, a two-yard touchdown toss. But moments later, Matt Ryan, once a Heisman candidate, his third touchdown pass of the game, 23-yard connection to Clarence Megla, 21-14 D.C. Craig. Well, Timmy, as you know, Boston College has not beaten Miami since the famous 1984 Flutie Pass <laughs> to Phelan. Phelan, pardon me. Gerald Phelan. What a, what a play that was. Replayed time and time again as Woodson throws, and it's caught by Tammy, the tight end, to the, come up the 30-yard line, the 31. You know, last year in Knoxville, Jacob Tammy, a career day of seven catches, 120 yards in that game. And well, he got a nice round of applause on senior day here in Lexington. He's an academic All-American from Kentucky. Does a lot of wonderful things in the community. Very involved and up for numerous awards, national awards for, uh, for all the wonderful things he does for this community here in, in uh, Lexington. Big third down for Kentucky. Third down and one. Don't think he got it. Little. Little is uh, right back at the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up fourth down for the Wildcats. So what do you do? The clock runs as you head to under, what, four minutes. And it's a 10-point ball game, fourth and about a half a foot. Yeah, Rich Brooks, he, he, he's making the right decision. You saw a little frustration there saying, ah, we got to kick it. Why, why can't we pick up a one-yard gain when we need it on third and one? You can't, you can't go for it backed up into your own end zone at the end of the half and run the risk of going down 24 to 7 going into halftime. Well, in an opportunity, so much time, they could still build a, a, a 27 lead on a Daniel field goal. And you know what else was a factor? That personal foul on De DeMario Ford, if they would have decided, if they would have not had that penalty. Timeout. Timeout. 17-7, Tennessee. Red Lobster presents today's Schuyler Athlete and a sleep to, to Tim Maste of uh, Kentucky. 3.72 GPA, his economic major, and the Red Lobster commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Kentucky's General Scholarship Fund. And he's back to punt, scoops it up. He's going to run it. Needed a yard. Ooh. Took a shot. First down, oh. Wildcats. And so after the timeout, Rich Brooks is a gambler. <laughs> He rolled uh, the dice, and uh, the drive continues. Nasty, I'll tell you what. That guy right there just got introduced to what it's like to run the football in big-time college football. He looked pretty fast going up in there. Went straight ahead, but watch this. No move. Ooh. Right in the chops. Gerard Mayo saying hello to him. Listen to this. Oh. <laughs> A Tennessee sandwich, uh, he, he, and he's still oh. feeling the effects. He's thinking, I'm glad I'm a punter. I don't have to deal with that on a regular basis right there. What a gutsy play. He's Well, how tough, though, Steve, in the first place to handle the snap. He had yep. to take it on a one-hop. Yeah, it was a bad snap. Uh, 
What a what a gutsy call, like you said, though, by Rich Brooks to go. It looked like it was designed. There was some blocking going on, and he he picked it up and went straight ahead. Rich Brooks just happy he made it, even though it was only by about a foot or two. Scooped the ball up, and then decides to tuck it and go. It. Now you know what? It, it was it was not a it was not a fake. No, you that was a see plan. The, that was a planned uh, call. The, the, no, it wasn't. The players were all running up the field to cover for the punt. I tell you, it was I, amazing. I think what he did when he picked up the ball and he realized there was some pressure coming, he said, one of these guys might block this thing. You're going to see. Watch everybody. If you could, you could see right there, he's getting ready to punt, and he's like, oh, this guy's coming in to block it right here from my right side. And I, I really believe that that was a reaction rather than a called play. And we'll get back to that at some point, I know, but... In my opinion, you can see from behind, everybody was running up the field to cover the kick. And a question that Rich Brooks will have to answer at halftime, post game, first down, and off the left side goes Little. You know, I, I, the way I thought he sold it, I thought Nash Day sold this. Watch all these guys, they're blocking like the 1001, 1002, they all release up the field, they're all going up the field to. To try and cover for the kick. Yep. Even number 47 was 41's going up to, looking. You're right. They're all looking up the field to go cover the kick. 41 had his eyes to the sky. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, so a reaction the, by the punter. And it pays off for, for Kentucky. <laughs> uh. Second down and six. Three wide receivers set to their side. Now Coach Brooks will say, sure, I called that. He went down. And the drive continues. Play clock wound down to two. Standing in that pocket for a week. You have to get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. Woodson, the old line gave Woodson all the time he could, they could. That was totally on Woodson. That was a coverage sack all the way, meaning that he was looking up the field, had plenty of time to make a decision, but there obviously was nobody open up the field. And that's where Andre Woodson would be better served to tuck it and run, trust his legs. He's a big guy. He's a fast guy. He can tuck it and do some things with it or throw that ball away. Ricardo dead. Kemp. Yeah, the clock still runs and you lose yards. It's just not a not a positive play at all. Kemp two sacks on the day. 12 yards lost. Third down and 10. Tennessee up by 10. Late here in the first uh, half. Woodson dances again and throws it far side. It's, it's a comebacker and it's caught by Johnson. Well, now they call it incomplete. Push down to bounds. Yeah, and, and and so after all that, it's going to be uh, a punting situation once again for Kentucky. Well, I, I would expect the Kentucky Wildcats to come out with a little bit more intensity the second half. They just really look like offensively they are not sharp. They're not as fired up as we felt they would be coming into this ball game, And they're kind of sitting back on their heels, letting Tennessee dictate everything. I think it's second half they'll come out with a little bit more fire and challenge this Tennessee volunteer team a little bit more. Mass Day. The high hanger, and that ball will bound out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Let's get a college football update. Back to New York, and here's Tim. All right, Craig, Virginia Tech freshman quarterback Tyrod Taylor. He's beating Virginia with his legs. Sean Clement doing it in the air. This is his second touchdown run of the game. Winner goes to the ACC title, and it's hokey, hokey, hokey high. The boys from BPI by nine right now. <laughs> Timmy, you got a great voice singing that. Virginia setting an NCAA record with five victories, two points or fewer. That's hard to do. First and 10, Tennessee at the 20 yard line. Four wide receivers. Ains from the shotgun, fires to the flat, it's complete. And a first down, Tennessee, as Dickie Lyons Jr. picks up big yards out of bounds at the 35. That stops the clock with 147 to play and Tennessee with a 10 point advantage here. Well, Tennessee obviously has plenty of time here now to work the clock and try and get on the board. That's a good good first play to this two minute drive and all the confidence that Phil Fulmer has in his offense today. They're going to try and get some points out of this. First and 10 shotgun low snap Ains dumps it over the middle. Austin Rogers, little pitch and catch. Rogers, a sophomore from Nashville. I think this crowd, Steve, will have to play a big factor to try to help uh, 
That'll be that 12th man in the third and fourth quarters here on their home field. Heads up, watch out. And there's Arian Foster just oh, dragging the pile with them, moving the pile like he does so well. But yeah, the energy just isn't here right now. And it, the first play of the game, Tennessee takes it all the way for a touchdown and uh, kind of took the wind out of the sails here, I think, of everybody in this stadium, including the team. Tennessee calls timeout with 117 to play. Balls by 10. Welcome back, Lexington, Kentucky, 19th ranked Tennessee with a 10 point advantage on the Wildcats. And what they're playing for today is very simple. If Tennessee wins, they clinch the Big East, the SEC East, and will go on to Atlanta next week to play LSU for the SEC championship. A loss today, and Georgia punches the ticket to Atlanta. Foster led head on at the 45 yard line. It's Tennessee be, needed what about a football uh, they needed about, oh, about a half a yard but I don't know if they got it they're gonna measure that was a good stout effort by the defensive front for Kentucky Arian Foster you figure he'd be able to move that pile and but, for the second time they bring out the chain gang It's going to be very close. Down. I think they might have got it, but boy, oh, yeah, barely. First down, Tennessee, 110 to play. Great look at Philip Fulmer in his 16th year. Of course, played at Tennessee, assistant coach, now the head coach. He's led the Vols to 14 bowl games. One of only six head coaches in the NCAA, active head coaches that have over 100 plus wins over the 500 mark. 145 and four record here at Tennessee and a national championship in his back pocket 1998 with T Martin at the helm Ainge good protection throws out to the flat it's a little pitching catch Pat, there's a tackle broken and Arian Foster having his way in that secondary of Kentucky to the 45 yard line first and 10 Tennessee late here in the second quarter a super job by Arian Foster open field run and making a quick move and then making making a decisive cut up the field not a great job by Kentucky on the tackling. They were in great position. They just kind of got stuck with their feet in the ground. And Arian Foster made him pay, converting another first down. Over 100 yards of total offense in the first half for Foster. Taylor and Briscoe. And a four wide receiver set. Ames dances and fires up over the top. Oh, it's picked off at the 31 yard line. 43 seconds for Kentucky to work with here in the second quarter. And that was a little bit greedy by Eric Ainge. He he saw thought he saw a scene the Luke, Lucas Taylor, but a great job of baiting him into the throw. A super job of getting that ball deflected, tipped up into the air, and then of course the finishing off, pulling it in. That was uh, Paul Warford that made the interception, and Trevard Lindley, number 32, is the one that tipped it. He kind of baited Ainge into throwing that ball, and that's the first interception in Ainge's last 123 attempts. What a great play for Kentucky. Last time he threw a pick, October 27th against the Gamecocks of South Carolina. So Kentucky with a chance, time a factor, 43 ticks, and that oh! ball is taken away. Rumbling, stumbling, and down goes Mitchell. Xavier Mitchell and there comes Ainge oh. so back-to-back -back interceptions and Tennessee with an opportunity to maybe put three on the board before halftime oh my goodness it, what can you say I mean Woodson thinks he's throwing a, a, an easy screen pass but Mitchell just all of a sudden pops up and I I can't fault Mitch I can't fault Woodson for that he didn't see Mitchell but boy, if you're not sure, if you can't see it, you gotta be a little more careful. But look at that, right there, all of a sudden, Mitchell comes off the block and the ball hits him right in the chest. What a gift. You got him all the way, you got him all the way. It's a lineman's dream. As Ains throws it out to the flat, Kentucky on the run, can't chase him down. Foster weak in his way to the 15 yard line. A pick up a three the hard way. And the clock stops with 23 seconds to play in the half. Timeout. Tennessee by 10. 
Well, the hero on defense on that last drive, Xavier Mitchell with the pick for Tennessee. He gives the football right back to his teammate, Eric Ainge. First interception this season for Mitchell. 23 ticks left on the second quarter clock, second down eight, Tennessee up by 10. At the 16-yard line, shotgun, Ainge dances, drops it up over the middle on the sliding grab, touchdown! Hancock for Tennessee! And Xavier Mitchell right there, number 93, the reason coming up with that big interception. Hancock stepping up and making a play when his chance comes up. A good quick decision by Eric Ainge. What? Nothing worse than that for Rich Brooks in Kentucky when they see, oh boy, they get all excited, they get an interception. Ainge doesn't make many mistakes and try and capitalize and then to have it taken away from you that quickly and then converted the other way for seven points. Not a good situation for Kentucky right now. 15-yard touchdown, sliding touchdown for Hancock. Daniel Lincoln in to try the point after. Low snap, the kick is away and splits the uprights. So the turnover cost Tennessee seven, and oh, they're pushing and shoving in Lexington. And welcome back as we went to break. Uh, a bit of a push and a shove, frustration, and personal foul flags thrown against both Kentucky and Tennessee. It was raining yellow, but they called it. it was offsetting penalties. You got one on Kentucky, one on Tennessee, so no damage done. Could have escalated, but both teams exercised pretty good poise there. Eric Ainge, very happy, very grateful to Xavier Mitchell. Two-play touchdown drive, 17 yards, capitalized by the 15-yard touchdown to Hancock, but Eric Ainge uncharacteristically made the bad decision just, just three plays before that, trying to pump one in there. And Woodson and Kentucky gave it right back, and it translates to seven more points for Tennessee, and now you're going to have to see go. Rich Brooks okay. and his staff really get aggressive offensively in the second half and try and create some opportunities to make plays. It's not, not what Rich Brooks was hoping for coming into this ball game. Well, remember last week, Tennessee had to pull up a big second half comeback scored 16 unanswered to keep their title hopes alive against Vanderbilt yep they're down 24 to 9 very similar to this so I'm sure Phil Fulmer will will be reminding his players about that at halftime Cole quick little squibber takes a wicked bounce at the 30-yard line and Tennessee covers Sam Maxwell with a special teams return for Kentucky. So Andre Woodson, six of 12, Steve, in the first half, 64 yards, that last interception. You've been in situations like this before. As a leader, you've got to make this team come together at the break. Yeah, this is where you really see what a guy's made of, and you, you, you look in his eyes, and he looks at you, and you either believe him or you don't. We'll see what uh, Andre Woodson can do with his teammates in the second half. They might take a shot to try and get in the field goal range here with one play. Woodson in the pocket, dumps it over the middle. It's caught at the 50-yard line. It'll go come ladder. And that stops the clock as Dickey Lyons Jr. That's oh, flag. multiple yep. flags. Late hit. Late hit at the 47-yard line. And not only was it a late hit, Craig, it was going low. That could have been a knee right there. And the referees will not allow that. You get a good look at it on the sideline after we hear the call. After the play is over, personal foul. Number 24 on the defense. Penalty will be added on for the end of the run. First down. And that, that puts Kentucky in field goal range. That's a 15-yard penalty. Watch what happens. The pass is completed. It's the old hook and lateral right there. Lyons comes around, gets knocked out of bounds. Then right here, boom, oh. down low with the legs. An unnecessary hit. And, a, and the right call, just a loss of poise. And it wasn't actually, it was not D'Angelo Willingham. It was Elix Wilson who came in. I don't think it was intentional, but he was a little bit out of control, and he went low, and that's why the flag was thrown. So this is a huge play for Kentucky. If they come out of this with three points, they're going to feel pretty good about themselves going into the locker room. Lona Sieber will try the field goal. His longest is 48. This will be 51 yards. With two seconds left, good snap, good hold, and it's going to be wide left. Well, the misery continues for Kentucky. That's the end of the first half with the score, Tennessee 24 and Kentucky 7.
Let's go to Tim Brando in New York. Moments away to start the third quarter here in Lexington, Tennessee, 19th ranked in the country with a 24-7 lead on the Wildcats. Craig Bullerjack, Steve Berline. Boy, the crowd's been down. Kentucky's been down. Eric Ainge has been way up, 271 yards, passing three touchdowns, and it's been the big play, the quick-hitting offense of Tennessee in this ballgame. Oh, you're exactly right, Craig. And the, the first play of the game is when it started for Eric Ainge. He came out, found Arian Foster down the left sideline for the big statement on the opening play hey boys from kentucky we're here to play and it's going to be a long day it sure has for the wildcats especially their defense Ainge again right here the lucas taylor hookup for the touchdown beautifully executed back shoulder throw and then right before the half finding hancock in the back of the end zone taking advantage of the re-turnover from andre woodson following eric Ainge's one bad play the interception you see the passing yards huge difference almost 200 yards and Andre Woodson has not thrown for less than 200 yards in 17 straight games but it's been complete domination by the Tennessee Volunteers over Kentucky from start to finish I expect that Rich Brooks probably got into his team pretty good pretty firmly at halftime and I think these guys will come out and try and get the crowd into it right away see if they can get some momentum going, play with a little bit more passion. You think he gave uh, Philip Fulmer a call and said, can you send me that speech you gave last <laughs> week against Vanderbilt? Yeah, woke his team up, but Rich Brooks hoping, obviously, for the same result. And Burton takes the knee five yards into the end zone. Kentucky down by a score of 24 to 7, and will start this third quarter at their own 20-yard line. Woodson, 7 of 13 in the first half for 78 yards. The season average, look at the difference, 265 yards on the average this season and held just to 78 yards passing through two quarters. Yeah, it, it, this, they're not used to being in this position, the Kentucky on, uh, offense. They are used to dictating and dominating, and it has not happened today, and it starts with up front. His offensive line has got to keep the Tennessee defensive front from getting to him. Five wide receiver set. And three to the top side of your screen. First and ten as we start the third quarter. And Woodson slings shots it to the flat. Raphael Little bumped out of bounds around the 31-yard line. And that will be close. In fact, that is a first down. They will move the chains. 11-yard pickup. And in the first half of play, Woodson, Little, and Johnson. How about the big three? 88 yards for Woodson now. A touchdown and a pick. Little has had 15 carries for 53 yards. And two balls caught by uh, Johnson for 32 yards and the touchdown. Not the kind of fireworks you'd expect. You've got to have a few of these guys step up and make some plays to get this crowd back into it. Tennessee shows blitz on the corner. Long snap count. Shotgun Woodson. Again, the five wide receiver set. And that ball is batted down incomplete. Second down for Kentucky. Gerard Mayo put up the big paw, the middle linebacker who last week had a career, career day against Vandy with 15 tackles. And there's Gerard Mayo. He is a legitimate NFL linebacker. He's got the size and the speed, the combination, and the instincts to go out there and, and make plays. And looks like Kentucky has come out and said, we're going to try and spread the field. It's the, the third straight play. They've had an empty backfield with the five wide receiver look. Second down at 10 after the uh, batted down pass. Four on the shot clock. Tennessee brings pressure. Out of bounds. Goes little. Patience by Woodson paying off on this early drive of the second half. And the chains once again. Well, if you're defending just against short. an empty backfield, yeah, just short of the first down, if you're defending against empty backfield, you can see the first half possessions for Kentucky there. A lot of them, but not a lot of good stuff. But Back up, Dylan. The one thing you can do to try and throw off their rhythm is put some pressure on him. If Woodson is not making quick decisions, accurate decisions, the pressure will get to him because he's got nobody in the backfield to pick it up. The other thing is to sit back and try and drop everybody back into coverage and try and take away all of his throwing lanes. Right there, Tennessee came with the pressure. Woodson knew exactly where to go. 
and they're going to measure for the first down and see if it got it. Third time they brought the chains out today. Chain gang working uh, a little overtime. Yeah, getting their exercise. Stretches it out. Got the first down. So first down, Kentucky. Well, first half possessions, you mentioned punt, punt, three and out. TD, punt, punt, you pick, and then the missed field goal as the time ran out. There's only one acceptable result out of there. The rest of them have all been negative. And uh, it's, it's not like they haven't had their chances. They just have not been converting real well on third down. And up front, again, they've been getting dominated by the physical, quicker Tennessee defensive line. Little tries to push his way off the right side. And maybe a yard. Game tackled by Tennessee. A host of white helmets in on that stop. And Steve, I think it's fair to say, you know, Rafael Little is a, is a terrific weapon. But, you know, so is Dickie Lyons, Jr., uh, Tammy, the tight end, Burton, and Johnson. You, you almost feel like maybe Kentucky's uh, settling in on just one particular player and not spreading out and letting the other players get their hands on the football. Well, I don't think it's by game plan, and I don't think it's anything in particular that Tennessee's doing except they're finding a way to get to Woodson and not allowing him to look up the field. And here they come with a little bit of pressure. They're going to try and bring something off the edges. And they bring the pressure. Woodson spots his man, and the ball is caught by Burton. He was down. He was down. He was down. Tennessee he was down. claiming they have recovered the fumble. But the official on the spot has it downed at the 47. Yeah, Tennessee trying to sway a little bit the referee's decision, but I think you'll see. The runner is ruled down at the spot here. First down, Kentucky. And a good job again by uh, Andre Woodson of seeing the pressure, getting rid of the ball quickly, and you'll see he's down right there. The ball comes out when it hits the ground. That's not going to be a fumble. Now, Keenan Burton, terrific wide receiver, a Bolitnikoff finalist, and 23 career touchdowns. Number two all time at Kentucky. First and 10 in the Wildcats, knowing they must find the end zone here in the first possession of the third quarter. Slink shot outside to the 40 yard line, and Burton back to back catches. Vincent, the freshman left corner, and on the tackle. Well, it's pretty apparent that the way Rich Brooks and Joker Phillips have decided to attack this Tennessee defense in the second half is going to be with quick stuff. They don't want Woodson out there taking any more hits. They want to get the ball moving, move the chains, short completions, try and slow down that front of, of Tennessee as they get going into the second half. Quick three-step drop near side. It's caught by the tight end, Tammy, into the 30-yard line. So the chains continue to move for the Wildcats. Jacob Tammy, senior out of Danville, Kentucky. Now Woodson all of a sudden has upped his totals to nearly 130 yards through the air after the struggles in the first half. On this drive, five of six, 51 yards. From the eye, first and 10 at the 30 of Tennessee. Play action. Woodson stands up in that pocket. Now decides a tuck and run. Breaks one tackle and will not, will not escape the grasp of Tennessee's front. Well, you know, for years, the Tennessee Volunteers up front have been known as a very physical, very athletic and fast defensive front. Their tackles and their defensive ends always can get up the field and make things happen right there. Andre Woodson thinking he had a chance to tuck it and run and do something. But no, they closed the gap very quickly and made him eat that football for a four-yard loss. Uh, John Chavis, a defensive coordinator, and the officials now tell the volunteers to back it up off the sideline. What Chavis does so well is rotate his defensive front lineman. Always fresh legs of Mitchell or Bolden. Maybe it's Fisher or Brown. Mapu's in that mix. Mm -hmm. Always fresh legs up front for Tennessee. They've got some great depth up there. They're, they're all quality starting type of defensive linemen. He's got the leverage and the luck of being able to go with that. Ninth play of this drive. And again, the pressure by Kentucky. Forcing that throw by Woodson. Elix Wilson, the middle linebacker, coming strong. 
Yeah. That brings up third and 13. And Chavis is showing us that under pressure is the way he wants Andre Woodson to feel. He wants to try and bring people from different angles. They're doing a little bit of all out man to man blitzing, but what they're doing more than anything is they're trying to blitz and they, they think they found a combination to a few of the blocking schemes of Kentucky and they're able to do it with coming from certain angles and dropping other people in zone blitzes. Third down and 13. Wildcats three of nine on third down conversion. Deep drop. Woodson all day. Take it. Plenty of room to rumble at the 30. The 25, 20. And slides to the 17 yard line. Kentucky with a first down. McKenzie and Hefney with the stop. But for the first time today, we see Woodson take advantage of a little running room. It had to be something that was mentioned to him at halftime right there. You know, he is a pocket guy. He wants to throw the ball. He doesn't want to run much, but he's a good enough athlete. He's six foot five. He can get that body moving forward. And I guarantee you, those safeties and those cornerbacks don't want to come and take him on. He's a big boy. And I think Rich Brooks probably told him, if you don't see anything up the field, tuck it and run. Make him respect you. Now, so far, that's the play of the third quarter to see if Kentucky can't get themselves back in this football game down 24-7. Again, the five, five wide receivers set. They've done exclusively with that here in the third quarter. This is a design play on the keeper. And Woodson will fall past the 15 of the 13-yard line to pick up a four. Second down for, tennis, uh, for Kentucky. Dan Williams to stop. Well, that was, that was kind of a, a strange play. It wasn't really a quarterback draw, but it surely wasn't a quarterback sneak. And I'll tell you what, Ryan Carl, the linebacker right now for Tennessee, he, got, he went up and moved the ball back about six inches from where the referee put. None of the referees even saw that. <laughs> Second down and eight. Woodson drops it. Little has room, five. Pushes to the four-yard line. Oh, great effort by Raphael Little. Eric Berry put the shoulder pads on Little, and it's going to be first and goal at the four-yard line. The right play at the right time. You see McCoy right there, Rico McCoy coming off the side. The blitz was coming. Raphael Little was split out to the left side. They had a quick screen set up to him. He caught it on the move, got it behind his big offensive lineman, and, man, that was a great call. Perfect result. Kentucky threatening at the three-yard line now going in. How about this drive of 13 plays that started at the 20-yard line? Exactly what Kentucky needed here to start the third quarter in Lexington. First and goal. They'll mark it at the four-yard line. Once again, the five-receiver set. High snap. Woodson able to grab it, and then he's going to be game-tackled and pushed back for a yard loss at the five-yard line, led by Robert Ayers. You know, Craig, right there, that was that, I think it was the same play. It was a direct snap to Woodson. It's a design run. He's the, but it was a bad snap he couldn't get into. It's almost like Tim Tebow does at Florida where they, they actually design the runs up inside for the big physical quarterback. Now, let's don't mistake Woodson for Tim Tebow. <laughs> there aren't many quarterbacks I've ever seen that can take the ball up in there between you know, the tackles. Alex, like Alex Smith did it at Utah, but of course the head coach was the same, Urban Meyer. Right, right. Second down and goal, 9.43. Left to play third quarter. Shotgun, Woodson. Looks for the end zone, has a man, touchdown, Kentucky! Dickie Lyons Jr. with his seventh reception for six this season. Boy, did Kentucky need that right there, Woodson. You can see the relief on his face when he's walking off the field. Rich Brooks says, that's what I'm talking about. Really well-designed play. Kentucky obviously saw that the way that the Tennessee defense plays that little red zone goal line defense they just drop about halfway back into the end zone, and there is space behind him over the top with a tall quarterback. He can drop it in there like he did the Lions. Sieber will try the extra point, boots it up, and good. So Kentucky responds to Rich Brooks's pleas at the half as it's Woodson up and over. Great grab by Lions Jr. 24-14, Tennessee. And let's take a look at Home Depot's tools for success. And that last offensive drive by, ten, by Kentucky, oh, great success. Yeah, how do you build a touchdown drive where you let your big quarterback take it for about 15? Then he finds his Raphael Little for the quick screen pass for another 10, puts him inside the five-yard line, and you finish it up going over the top to Dickey Lyons for the touchdown drive and letting Tennessee know that, hey, boys, 
this game isn't over yet. You remember last week you came back on a Vanderbilt team that, you, that had you down 24 to 9. We're going to try and do the same thing. 14 plays, 80 yards, and Woodson answers 7 of 9, 67 yards passing on that drive. And in the first half, he was 7 of 13 for 78 yards with an interception. That drive right there, he doubles his completions. Kentucky, the fans got to believe they're back. Short kick, fumbled at the 12-yard line. Creer picks it up. And Tennessee will start this first drive of the third quarter at the 15-yard line. Well, time to check out the Aflac trivia question of the day. Thank you. Who's the only player in Kentucky history to have his number retired in football and basketball? We'll have that answer a little later on. Right now, we've got a ball game in Lexington. 24-14 Tennessee. First possession of the third quarter for the Vols. Play action. Ainge slingshots it over the middle. It's tapped and dropped at the 32-yard line. And I think the big factor here as we watch this game unfold, the crowd set on their hands in the first half after that big play, that first strike to Arian Foster, which just took the air out of it. Took the air out of this uh, sell-out crowd. It really did, and, and that, that coupled with the fact that the Tennessee defense did not even remotely stop the the, 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 the Kentucky defense did not stop Eric Ainge and the Tennessee offense that whole first half. There was nothing to get excited about. Second down at 10 as Ainge goes under center. Hand off. Foster stops and goes, nothing up the middle, try to cut it outside, down to the 19-yard line. Let's go back for a college football update to New York and Tim. Craig, thanks. The winner gets the Big East BCS bid, Tyler Lorenz, and a six-yard strike to Brad Kanyu. So Connecticut has the lead, and then after a 49-yard hookup to Darius Raynaud, Pat White takes it in from three yards out there, tied at seven in Morgantown. Craig. Now the... UConn Huskies, West Virginia, and Cincinnati, the only Big East teams UConn has never defeated. We'll keep an eye on that game. It's a 10-point Tennessee lead here in Lexington as the clock runs under nine minutes. Third quarter. And yes, the crowd is very much in it. Wildcats showing blitz. Here they come. Ainge handles it, throws up and over. Single man coverage incomplete at the 35. Lindley got an arm up on a on the top of Austin Rogers. Did you and, see Philip Fulmer there? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> he was. I didn't know he could still move like that. Oh, he, he, was, he was. He was begging for that pi as well. And I'll tell. I like what Kentucky did on that drive. They came out, and Steve Brown said, "We're going to get away from what we normally do and sitting back and waiting. We're going to come and force the issue, which is the way I think you play, Eric Ainge. You come out and you say, make a quick decision, throw an accurate ball." If that's how you're going to do it, that's how you're going to have to do it. Raphael Little set to return the punt of Bolton. And Kentucky should have five field positions. Good pressure on that punt. Little is drilled and dropped at the 36-yard line. A 45-yard boot, no return. Kentucky back on the field. When we come back, down 10. SEC on CBS is sponsored by Ruby Tuesday. Liberty Mutual. The Nissan Titan. And by the Home Depot. Now 67,000 and change on their feet. 24-14 as Kentucky tries a rally against the Volunteers. Pitch out, lock, the freshman. And a swarming defense by Tennessee, and a couple of balls slow to get up, including uh, Xavier Mitchell and Andre Woodson. Last drive, Steve Berline, 7 of 9, 67 yards and the touchdown. As you mentioned, the first half numbers, 7 of 13 for 78, a touchdown and an interception. Yeah, what we saw that first drive was the quick passes, getting back and getting rid of the ball, not letting Tennessee get a chance to get up the field and disrupt the rhythm of Andre Woodson. Let's see if they stick with it on this drive. It worked. I would stick with it until they stop it. 
Wildcats load up the near side, three wide receivers. Woodson from the shotgun, fires a dart. It's incomplete. Derek Locke, the intended receiver, and Woodson says, hey, freshman, let me talk to you for a moment. You know what happens on plays like that, Craig? It's a running back flexed out in a wide receiver position, and they're not used to being out there. And the rhythm, the timing between a quarterback and a running back, the confidence is not there as it would be with a wide receiver. And if that running back is a split second late getting around on a quick pass like that, it throws it off completely. Woodson was ready to throw the ball. Locke wasn't ready to catch it at that point. And Locke finds himself on the sideline now. Third down and five for Kentucky. Woodson from the shotgun has man coverage near shot over the shoulder just off the fingertips of Jacob Tammy. And I think that ball was a little bit late by Andre Woodson. I, I think if he would have got that ball up a little bit quicker, might have hit the ball, hit, hit, hit Tammy right out of his break. He could have been able to bring that ball down, get his feet in bounds. They'd have a nice conversion. He waited a little bit too long to see if Jacob Tammy was indeed open. You've got to have that confidence and you've got to make that decision a little bit quicker. What a great target Tammy is at 6'5", 240. Mass Dave will come in to punt. Seven twenty-six to play in the third. Good snap, kicks away. Ooh, a line drive. Beautiful kick as Rogan takes it at the 11-yard line. Dances back inside the 10 and crawls to the 15-yard line. A 48-yard kick and a four-yard return. Derek Locke, who was pulled to the sideline, makes the special teams tackle. Got to make up for it somehow. Tomorrow on Cold Case, he was classic valedictorian, good-looking, charming, popular, so why did every co-ed on campus want him dead? You can find out on an all-new Cold Case tomorrow at 9, 8 central on CBS. First and 10 for Tennessee at the 15-yard line. 24-14, volunteers with seven minutes and change left in the third. A cold and a first down, or close to a first down for... Foster to the 22, and how about the Aflac answer? Who was the only player in Kentucky history to have his number retired in football and basketball? And that answer? Wah Wah Jones. <laughs> of course. Good old Wah Wah. Yes. Ball stay on the ground. Foster, a pickup of one, short of the first down, and there is. Take a look, Wah Wah. Football played end from 45 to 48 under the great coach, Bear Bryant. Basketball was a three-year letterman, an All-American from 46 to 49. Look at that old time. No face mask on that helmet, yeah. by the way. That brings you back. Yeah, back in my time. Well, maybe not quite. By your little. The aging Steve Berline. Third down and short. Going to try to ride it right up the gut and a first down. Foster pushes the pile. First down, Tennessee. We now send you to New York for a Liberty Mutual update, Tim. All right, Craig. Well, despite what happened to Oklahoma last week, they go to the Big 12 title game if they win this week against Oklahoma State in the Bedlam Series. Alan Patrick takes it in from five yards out. They're up 14 to nothing. Tim, I remember the day where Nebraska and Oklahoma dominated the old Big 8, now the Big 12. And what do you know? Tonight at Arrowhead in Kansas City, all eyes on Kansas, Missouri. Yep, and the, the winner of that game will get a piece of Oklahoma if Oklahoma can pull it off. Rolling out, Ainge at the 30-yard line, and Briscoe to about the 31. They're going to keep the clock running as he was tackled in bounds. Well, Kentucky. 67 yards passing, Tennessee yet to pick up yards in that category. They go back to the ground and stuffed up the middle. Jeremy Jarman, great job as he dropped and wrapped up Arian Foster. I really like this kid, Jeremy Jarman. He's got nine sacks on the season. He may not get a sack out there today on Eric Ainge because he's tough to get to, but I guarantee you that the Tennessee offensive linemen know who he is. He's gonna make you work 
and he's only going to get better with age. He's got two more years after this one, but he's already been recognized as one of the best. Wants to pursue a career with the FBI or CIA. What an opposing figure he would be. Yeah, I, I, I'm not running from him. <laughs> Play clock down to four, down to three. Snaps it with two. Foster taken down. Fourth down for Tennessee. This time, Corey Peters with the tackle. Tennessee better be careful here. You know, you can sense they're getting a little bit more conservative here. A bootleg pass, a couple of runs up the middle, and, you know, you're, you're, you're playing with a 10-point lead. Sure, you're halfway through the third quarter, but the momentum has shifted to Kentucky right now, and you're giving the ball back to them. They're going to get decent field position. If they can put a drive together, you got a ball game all of a sudden. Cole Quick will boot it from his own 20 oh. again. Heavy pressure. Got it away. Little watches it fall into his hands at the 24-yard line. Pops through a hole, but it closed in a hurry. And the Wildcats will have first and 10 when we come back from the 27-yard line. A 43-yard kick and a two-yard return. Tomorrow on The Amazing Race, the teams hustle through Africa where they'll need to find speed, skill, and maybe a little rhythm in order to stay ahead. Don't miss the show. Critics call one of the best on TV. It's an all-new Amazing Race tomorrow after 60 minutes here on CBS. And see, this is what Tennessee's playing for. And, of course, a chance to clinch the SEC East. If they do, they go to Atlanta to play LSU for the SEC title. If they lose, Georgia is on their way. Quick hitter to Tammy, near side. Tammy, the sure-handed tight end who lines up wide, inside and out. Little slot, wherever they need him, he'll be. And that turns out to work like a, just like a very easy, smooth sweep to the left side. A lot of different ways to do that. It's a good, safe throw. If Woodson sees the right look, he makes the decision to go to that. Pick up a nice seven-yard gain. Yards starting to come now for Kentucky. Tennessee coming with the blitz. It's red, it's picked up. Woodson, was he down? I believe he was. He's down, I think. At the 30-yard line. Third down. Good job coming with the pressure on Tennessee. Woodson steps up and, ooh, wow, oh. wait a minute. That ball did pop out of there, Craig. Watch this. Watch the strip right there. Boom, there comes out. the ball. It's out. It's out. Recovery. Not a deep. They change it. Yep. The beanbag was down. They pick it up, and Tennessee gets the ball at the 30-yard line. DeMonte Bolden, number 98, is the one that got in there and, and stripped it right before he took Woodson to the ground. You see right here. He gets the big paw on it and pulls it right out of there. Super job of fighting to the bitter end right there and popping that ball out. Second turnover today by Kentucky, both on the shoulders of Woodson, the interception and now the fumble. And very uncharacteristic of, of Woodson. You know, he went at one point about nine games, 325 passes without throwing a pick, and that was an NC is still an NCAA record. It looks like Rich Brooks might want to challenge this. Now Penn wagers discussing most likely that very uh, that very thought. Rich Brooks, a ter terrific career the previous at play Oregon. Is on the further review. There is no timeout. It's well, for under what further we, review? What we saw. That ball was out. Yeah. I don't, and it was ruled a fumble, so again, it's got to be conclusive that it wasn't a fumble, but yeah, he's got no, no part of his body on the ground. No knees. Both are, uh, nope. both are well up off the ground. That ball just simply uh, muscled away. He was in the process of going to the ground. It wasn't like it was a forward progress type of thing where the play was held up. He was going to the ground. Back-to-back seven-win seasons for Kentucky. Rich Brooks a year ago, eight and five. 
was at Oregon from 77 to 94, made a stop in the National Football League, and now back with Kentucky. And much to Rich Brooks' chagrin, they just came back and said, yes, indeed, it was a fumble. It is going to be Tennessee's ball at the 30-yard line. Now, this is where Kentucky's defense has to make a stand. They really do. They, uh, th th this, is, this is a now or never time here. How bad do you want to get to that bigger bowl game? You've got to show it right now on defense. Eric Age under center. Lob it up top and is caught. Foster tried to dance down the sideline and a little dipsy do there by Philip Fulmer. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. All right, Craig, the team that perhaps got the most out of LSU's defeat to Arkansas was West Virginia. Here, Pat White, a 14-yard toss to Darius Raynaud. This was after a Connecticut fumble. Now 14-7. Mountaineers are poised not only to get into the BCS with a win, but maybe even the BCS National Championship game. Oh, indeed. And, Tim, that, uh, that BCS picture still very scrambled. And maybe it becomes a little clearer tonight when Missouri and Kansas battle it out in Kansas City. 24-14 here in Lexington as Foster trying to carry the load for the Vols on the offensive end. Yeah, that BCS picture will clear up as we know LSU isn't going to be up there anymore. They're going to drop a little bit and then Kansas, Missouri going head to head. One of them's going to move up. One of them's going to move back. West Virginia's going to scoot up in there. Could realistically get up to, to number two. All things considered, you know, they could. How about Ohio State just hanging out there waiting to see what happens in front of them? Yep. Ohio State's going to be right in the mix. You go on down the line, that, that those first six or seven teams all have a legitimate chance of getting in there. Second down and eight. Ames with a three-step drop, drops it off in the flat. It's caught in a reach out. Chris Brown, first time. Well, we've talked much about Brown today. He's involved in this offense, but so many defenses concentrate on stopping Chris Brown. And today he's had trouble getting his hands on the football. Now, he, he's not one of those guys that's featured very often. He's only got 36 catches on the year coming into this game. And, but, but he does present a very unique matchup problem because of all the things they can do with him. And he will make some big plays when given the opportunity. Tennessee trying to put this game out of reach if they can. The cut. No, no, it's over. Foster is dropped at the two-yard line. Second down and goal as the clock reaches two minutes left in the third quarter. Foster today, 18 carries for 61 yards. The two coaches, Fulmer and Brooks. Brooks very proud that Kentucky football. All he says we need to do now to match Tennessee's and the LSU's is depth. Yeah. It's all about depth here in Lexington. Second down and goal, 10 on the play clock for Ames under center. Play action, rolls out, now steps up, throws the other's way, and it's caught by Cottom. Jeff Cottom. Brother Brad had a big catch in the first half now. Brother Jeff gets his turn. The Cotton brothers strike again. Now, this is another one of those half semi-roll bootleg action type of things where Tennessee, you got to give them credit. You got to really give David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, and Phil Fulmer the credit for creating a scheme, a game plan. A lot of these semi-roll type things and throwing it back the other way have left Tennessee wide open on the other side of it. And, of course, the players have to execute it, but the timing of the call and the design of the play have been absolutely spectacular all day long. Daniel Lincoln in to try the point after. And the kick is good. So Jeff Cottom, sophomore from Germantown, Tennessee, is only his fourth catch of the season. And his first touchdown grab for Tennessee, 31-14, Volunteers. Now Jeff Cottom exchanges some high fives on that Tennessee sideline. 31-14 balls. How about five plays, 30 yards, and less than two minutes off the clock on that drive. So now Kentucky, Steve Berline will have to answer back and get this crowd, Big Blue, back in it in Lexington with 131 to play in quarter number three. Well, Kentucky's at that point now where they've got to They've got to force the issue. They don't have the luxury anymore of being able to sit back and 
and really just stick with their game plan. They've got to get some points on the board. It's now a, a three-score game. So you, the question is, can you get it in the end zone and get the ball back enough time to get it to make this a ball game? Good kick. Burton. Cut back at the 20 and slides to a stop at the 21-yard line. And key plays right off the bat, Arian Foster, first play of this game, all alone, takes it down the sideline, nice cut back, 65 yards, and Tennessee goes up by seven. And Steve, Woodson's had uh, pressure, bumps, hurries, and sacks all day long. Plus the interception in that first half, and then a fumble on that last drive and so it's just been a little here a little there big plays all day for Tennessee and that ball nearly caught by Johnson dropped it down at the 30 yard line that stops the oh, clock hell, with hell. Plenty to play in the third I believe that ball was batted as it came out of Andre Woodson's hand knocked it offline a little bit but it's just one of those things where you've never really gotten the impression with the exception of that first drive of the second half that Kentucky has really found something they feel good about offensively. Tennessee has kept them off guard. They've really capitalized on the turnover opportunities. Both turnovers by Woodson have resulted in touchdowns, and it's a 17-point ball game now. Second down and 10. Andre Woodson sets up in the shotgun. Five wide receivers. Woodson looks downfield now. The pressure again. Tucks and runs. Picks up a nice block. He'll now throw in his back foot deep. Oh, it's taken away. It is caught by Tammy. Wow. In a battle with Barry. First and 10 Wildcats at the Tennessee 38. That's one of the rules I've always absolutely loved about offensive football. If two guys catch it, the offensive guy gets it. But I'll tell you, Eric Barry really was the first one to catch that ball. But Tammy doing a super job of giving that extra effort to get both paws on that ball and knowing that if they both catch it, it goes to Kentucky. Senior Jacob Tammy out wrestles the freshman Eric Berry, a pickup of 40 yards, and all of a sudden Kentucky is back in business. Little option play, and the pitch out near side. It's Rockwell Little stacked up down near the 35 yard line. A pickup of two. You, you know who Andre Woodson reminds me of running that option? Another guy that wasn't too comfortable doing it back in his heyday, myself. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Holtz, I had Lou Holtz his first year at Notre Dame, and he made me run the option about four or five times a game, and I wasn't a real mobile guy, but it was just enough oh, to you, keep the, what? Are you going to do your Lou Holtz impersonation? I'm not going to do any Lou Holtz impersonation, <laughs> no, 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 no. But Woodson, he's running about three or four times a day. It hadn't been too successful, but something else for Tennessee to think about. 30 seconds left, third quarter, handoff. Little stop and go, lock the freshman, breaks free, has speed, has power to the 14-yard line. Wes Brown brought him down and saved the touchdown, and this crowd is alive as we stretch into the fourth quarter. 19 ticks left, first and 10, big blue. You know what that play told me right there, Craig? That play told me that when Raphael Little leaves Kentucky, the running game is going to be in good hands. That Derek Locke looked like he knew exactly what to do with that football. Tremendous cut, tremendous burst, and a big play for the Wildcats. 21 yards for the freshman from Hugo, Oklahoma. At the 15-yard line, a little quick throw, far side, it's caught, big play, Tammy reaches out, out of bounds at the two-yard line. Kentucky may find the end zone before we close out the third quarter. They might, they might. They, they look like, for whatever reason, they're coming out with a little bit of spark on this drive. That catch by Tammy down the sideline got this crowd back into it, and, and maybe it got this whole offense believing, hey, you know what? It just takes a couple plays to get back in this game. Let's see if we can do it. First and goal. Kentucky down 31-14. They're a powerhouse team in the fourth quarter, outscoring their opponents 102 to 67. And the final 15 yet to come. Woodson, play action, throws, corner, touchdown, Tammy, Kentucky. How about that drive? They answered the touchdown by Cottom, and one second remains in the third quarter.
and a great throw and catch. They're almost a little bit too late by Woodson. Tammy came open really quick, but Woodson had to get outside and roll and almost missed his window to get that ball in there, but put it right on the money. And Tammy, boy, did he make up a couple big plays in that drive, really get this crowd back into it. Lona Sieber will try the extra point. Now buckle up for a fourth quarter. Kentucky's had great success in the fourth this season. And the chip shot is up and good. Tammy scores corner of the end zone. Fifth touchdown reception of the season. Wide open. Yep, you see how quickly he comes open, but Woodson, he's got to turn around and find him. It almost gives Hefney, number 33, a chance to get back in there and break that play up, but the ball is put right on the money, up and over the top, and it's a touchdown. We put you right on the field for that one, and Tammy wide open, and one tick on the third quarter clock. How about that drive? Six plays, Kentucky goes 78 yards, a minute 30. And Tammy was terrific. Three receptions, 54 yards in the touchdown. Yeah, and the biggest one was the first one, the, the big play jump ball where he went up in what looked to be a sure interception by Eric Berry because he's not going to drop that ball. He ends up taking it away, taking it to the ground with Eric Berry. And Rich, Rich Brooks says, you know what? My senior tight end, academic All-American, came through, gave us a chance to find our way back into this game. Uh, Woodson's been a different quarterback in this second half. He's now thrown for at least 200 yards and a touchdown in 18 consecutive games. 205 yards and two touchdowns so far through three quarters. I don't believe I've ever seen more kickoffs out of bounds in one game. That's the third one this game. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Have you ever seen so many? No, I have not. And I guess that's a decision by Phil Fulmer to go with it at the 35-yard line because we've seen it taken at the 35-yard line twice, and we've also seen Kentucky have Tennessee re-kick it when they kicked it out of bounds. So the coaches have the choice on how they want to how they want to exercise their options there. Final play of the third quarter. Ainge under center, gonna roll out and throw it on his back foot. Oh, a collision at the 42-yard line, but somehow Cottom hung on. Oh, the Cottom brothers with a big ball game here in Lexington, and that ends the third quarter with the score. Tennessee 31 and Kentucky 21. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this message and a word from your local station. by 10 and with the football Eric Ainge under center drops back in the handoff Hardesty pushing his way to the 45 yard line Craig Bowler Jack Steve Burline pretty impressed Steve in the third quarter with the way Kentucky answered the touchdown by Tennessee 10 point ball game and they play very well in the fourth quarter and they had to I mean that was a point in the game where they really had to step up and and show Tennessee they weren't going to lay down they weren't going to just hand in the ball game and give up all their hopes and their their intentions of ending this thing on the right note as seniors their last game here in this stadium they want to end it on the right note and somehow it was able to be brought out in that last drive that they do have a chance to get back into this game and we'll see if their defense can now follow up. Rich Brooks, I know, is hoping to. The result of the play is a first down for Tennessee. After the play is over, personal foul, number 50, will be a 15-yard penalty, first down and 10. Josh McNeil, the center, and a personal foul called on the sophomore from Collins, Mississippi. And look at that pile as they try to unfold. Yeah, that, there's nothing that will frustrate a coach more than a personal foul than having one of your one of your leaders on your team your center's got to be a leader loses poise loses composure right there and cost the football team first down 
Ainge on the rollout, fires, incomplete. Lucas Taylor, the intended receiver. Let's go back to New York, and here's Tim Brando. Into the Big 12 South again, fellas. Oklahoma goes up 21 to seven. Chris Brown scores from three yards out. Three possessions, three touchdowns for the Sooners against Okie State. Fred. All right, Tim, thanks so much. Three for three is pretty good. Three yes. touchdowns and three possessions. That's a statement right there. There's some great rivalries in the Big 12. As we start the fourth quarter, Ainge throws complete and drops. At the 35-yard line, Austin Rogers, the intended receiver, the sophomore from Nashville. That brings up third down and 10. Well, this crowd, you can just feel, you can just feel Big Blue trying to find some fourth quarter rhythm. And, and they're, they're getting this crowd back into it. Eric Ainge right there. That was one of the very few, I think, bad decisions he made. He had Chris Brown in the flat uncovered out in front of Austin Rogers. Should have been his first read. He passed it up, went to Austin Rogers, who was pretty well covered. Incomplete pass. Tennessee, four of nine today on third down conversions. Ainge from the shotgun. Good protection. Throws it. Picked off! That ball hung just a bit. And Lindley. Pulled it in for Kentucky. Only the sixth interception thrown by Ainge. And I'll tell you what, you do your background check on this guy, Trevard Lindley right there, number 32, you'll find that this guy has done nothing but consistently make big plays, big interceptions in big games. He intercepted a ball in the LSU game this year that sealed the win. He intercepted a pass Late in the game, again, it's Louisville to win, to, to win the game or help win the game. This kid stepping up whenever he needs to and showing he can be a big timer. Woodson play action pass, far sideline incomplete. Nope, they're going to run up and call it incomplete. Burton trying to keep his toes planted, and he was out of bounds. That stops the clock, and second down and 10. Well, let's see. Let's check it out let's see if... Yeah, that, that hip hit out of bounds before the ball got there, and he never really had control anyway. And I've watched Rich, Rich uh, Brooks all day. He has not changed his expression. A very calm but intense man. Yeah, I've seen a little intensity a couple of times. I can feel the heat coming out of his, his, uh, his eyebrows there a couple of times. Second down. Little spin. Dixon. Tony Dixon with the ball. With the ball knocked down by Barry. The strong safety for Tennessee. The clock runs up on 14 minutes to play. Well, it's a 10 point ball game, and I'm thinking if I'm in Rich Brooks's shoes, if I don't get this third down conversion here, do I go for it and try and try and get the seven points this time? I think you probably have to because you're looking at a, a pretty long field goal attempt if you come up short. You saw Ainge on the phone upstairs. And a third down and eight. Kentucky today, four of 11 on third down tries. Shotgun, Andre Woodson rolls to his left. Has running room, pressure from behind, dropped. Back at the 41, the 39 yard line. Gerard Mayo. This young guy's been everywhere today, averaging nearly nine tackles a game throughout the season. And this is the thing that, that you would expect a senior quarterback not to do. You got to know the situation. The worst thing you could do here is take a sack. Last week against Georgia, they had a chance to, to get back in the ball game and score. He took an 18-yard sack. It took him out of field goal range and really hurt their team at a key point in that ball game. Right there, another situation. He lost about five or six yards. All you got to do when you get out there, throw it away, and at least you give your coach the option of going for the field goal. Low snap, little pooch kick. Hefley runs up on it, takes a bounce, and is down around the 15, 16 yard line. Look like your sandwich, my friend. Little backspin, 31 21, Tennessee. And now it's time for our Geico scoring recap. Well, points of plenty. Arian Foster, first play of this game, 65 yards, 7 0. Lucas Taylor. 
an 18-yard touchdown to make it 14-0. Steve Johnson rallies back. Kentucky, then the field goal of 45 yards by Daniel Lincoln. Just before half, Quentin Hancock, the slider, 24-7. Third quarter, Dickey Lyons Jr. makes it 24-14. Then the tight end, Jeff Cottom, puts Tennessee on top. But Jacob Tammy comes back, and it's 31-21. You get all that? And how about today? What it means? With a win today, Tennessee clinches the SEC East. They head to Atlanta to play LSU. Why? Because it beat Georgia six weeks ago. That's the tiebreaker. Exactly right. And, and wow, what a statement game that was for Tennessee. They've been able to keep it together, squeak by a couple times. They've got their destiny right at their fingertips. Well, Kentucky needs a statement here on defense as we are two minutes and change into the fourth quarter. Arian Foster, the ball carrier. And a first and 10 after the 12-yard pickup by Foster, who's had a very solid, methodical game today for Tennessee. Yes, he has been very consistent and really has, has helped control this ball game. Oh, double. Double. Lost the snap between McNeil and Ainge, and Eric Ainge covers up. That brings up second down. They'll lose a couple back to the 25-yard line. Tennessee very fortunate right there. We were talking about Foster, though, and, you know, both in the run game and the pass game. That's what's kind of significant. He's been used out of the backfield, made a statement the first play of the game, but he has been the key to their offense today, I believe. Second down and 11. And the offense, again, as they have throughout the season, glances back to that sideline. Foster, oh, beautiful move outside, strides to the 40, to the 45, and near midfield runs Arian Foster. Woodyard, the weak side linebacker with the stop and you, on a tough run by Foster. You know, Johnny Williams, number 51, had a chance to make that tackle in the backfield for about a three-yard loss. You're going to see right here, he's there. Oh, he dives. He lost his poise and lost his composure, made a commitment, dove, and therefore Arian Foster's able to pick up 20-plus yards and a big first down. Foster kind of like puts it in a trolling motion as he waits for that block, those blocks to open up a lane. Now, don't forget, later in the game today, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. And it could include that young man, Arian Foster. I, I think that's a pretty good bet. If, 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 it holds, if it holds consistent and Tennessee wins this game, it might be the first play of the game. Foster is closing in on 100 yards on the ground, 11 carries. That's 12, 21 carries for 95 yards. Second down and eight. Ainge, good protection. Now he goes to the flat. Guess who? Foster pushed out of bounds, but not before a first a first down. Let's go back to New York. A college football update, and here's Tim Brando. Craig, this is something Steve Berline has seen a lot of in college football this year. Zone read option by Matthew Stafford, 31 yards. It's now 10-7 in Atlanta. The Dogs, they've won six in a row in the series with Georgia Tech. Well, the Bulldogs aiming for their seventh consecutive win over Georgia Tech, and of course they re would retain the Governor's Cup trophy. Okay, I like that Georgia football team. Well, I'll tell you, they are playing as well as anybody right now. That that Tennessee game was a wake-up call, demolished in Knoxville, and now I, I guarantee you nobody wants a piece of them right now. Ames to Hardesty weaving, and is dropped at the Kentucky 38-yard line. You know, now you have to remember the clock playing a factor. Tennessee is going to try to just keep it running. They're under 11 minutes in the fourth with a 10 point lead. Second down seven. Tennessee is perfectly content at this point to just move the chains, keep that ball in the middle of the field. They come out of this drive with a, with a field goal. It makes it a two touchdown game. Obviously, a touchdown would make it a three score game. So either one of them would be acceptable to Phil Fulmer right now. Ainge with the check to the sideline, under center, second down seven. Hardesty off the right side. Big chunks, three and four yards ago. And again, as you said, Steve, great, great comment. Move them. And if you get three, then four, then six, first down, and the clock continues to run. Exactly right. 
Ventrell Jenkins and comes this, out. And th this is where Craig, you made the statement earlier about the only difference between Kentucky and one of the other elite teams in the SEC is depth. This is where the depth of Tennessee can really wear down this first team Kentucky defense. Third down and two. Crowd tries to give that Kentucky front some energy. They're on their feet. Knowing a first down is going to chew, chew more clock. Hardesty. No. Micah Johnson, the first Wildcat to meet him. So what do you do? Fourth down. Ten point lead. Well, you got fourth and three, a fourth and a full three yards. This would be, I'm guessing, about a 50, 50 yard, yard, a 50 yard attempt. Yeah, 50, 51 yarder. By Daniel Lincoln, as long as it's 48. Yeah, I think with a 10 point lead, your choices are either go for it or you punt it. You don't mess around with a field goal. And, and really, my gut tells me with a 10 point lead, you go ahead and pooch this thing down in there. Make, make Kentucky go 85, 90 yards for a touchdown. Phil Fulmer's going to let that clock run down and probably call a timeout. Think about it. Play clock to three to two and timeout. So 8.43 to play in the fourth. Philip Fulmer will take a timeout. Timeout in Lexington. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Red Lobster. Progressive. Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And by Sonic. Oh, Philip Fulmer's made his decision. The gambler will go for it on fourth down and three. Tennessee today 0 for 1 on fourth down conversions. Well, he likes the way his defense has been playing. That's given him a lot of confidence. I'm still surprised, though. I, I, I would think a punt would be the call here. Shotgun, low snap, Ains sets up and fires, incomplete, and Kentucky will take over on downs. And that's exactly why, Craig, you had the right play call, you had your quarterback put the ball on the money, and your sure, most sure-handed wide receiver, Lucas Taylor, has the ball, hit him right on the chest, and he drops it. I mean, you can't have a better play call, you couldn't have had a better ball thrown, and you got the money man making the catch on the other end, but it doesn't happen. That's the variable that people a lot of times forget about. Oh, you know, and look, look at Fulmer. Fulmer's reaction. Uh, Taylor was right, looking right in his eyes. They got exactly the look they wanted, and that's something that, you know, you, you roll the dice. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And Kentucky continues to breathe. Little pass. Rafael Little stood up near the first down marker. So they slide one inside on a slant to Little and picks up nine. Now let me go on the record and say I respect the heck out of Philip Fulmer for the aggressive mentality and the guts to make that call. I really do. I just think the percentages would say that the, the punt should have been the call right there. So a 10 yard pickup by Little. Not much. Brinter dropped and let's go back to New York. For a college football update, here's Tim. All right, Craig, a reminder, there's Heisman frontrunner Tim Tebow looking to solidify his position against Florida State. Bobby Bowden's looking for career win 374. They're scheduled to kick at 5.05 Eastern time, and you'll see it next right here on CBS Sports. Yeah, I wonder, Tim, did, did, did Tim Tebow have his shoulder pads on there, or were they not on? <laughs> that guy's so big, you can't even tell when he's got them on. Well, he's a special player indeed. Second down, nine. Andre Woodson from the shotgun. Sets up, good protection, fires it up and over the middle. It's caught. Big catch by Steve Johnson, still on his feet. Turns it outside and is dropped down at the 35-yard line. Kentucky continues to put the pressure on Tennessee. Yeah, they're relentless. you got to give it to these, these cats, man. They're, they're sitting in there saying, we're still in this game. Our big play guys, our seniors aren't going to let us go down without a fight. That was the one thing every one of these seniors told us when they came in as freshmen, they wanted to leave with their class being the ones that got this attitude and this mentality changed. They're showing why again tonight. Johnson, four catches, 63 yards, had a 17-yard touchdown in the second quarter. Woodson wants to throw again over the middle and complete. And again, so close, Burton right off his hands. 
and that stops the clock with 7.16 to play. Second down, 10. Not and it looks like Burton comes up. Yeah, he's limping a bit. Yeah, got a little twisted up there, but that, that was not a good throw by Woodson. He had Burton open, had a chance to make the throw. Just didn't happen. Well, you have Rich Brooks, the head coach, trying to second guess or out guess, I should say, John Chavis, the defensive coordinator of Tennessee. Two wide outs near side, second down 10. Woodson goes under center, play action. Drop it off. A lot of room to rumble. Watch out. Little out of bounds inside the 15. Raphael Little. Robert Ayers laid a shot on Woodson like you wouldn't believe. This is the quarterback's worst nightmare. He's stepping into the throw, and he's lifted off the ground and driven into the ground. Full body weight of Robert Ayers, and that is, my friends, 260 pounds. And watch how he steps and he's lifted and all that weight comes down on top of Andre Woodson. If he's fortunate, he just got the air knocked out of him. What a great gutsy play on his part to deliver that ball on the money to Little. Now you've been there, what's I've this been feel there. like? It does not feel good, trust me. I don't miss that part about the game at all. But he's able to suck it up and put it right on the money to Rafael Little. He's gonna be back into the next play. That showed me a lot right there. Showed Red, me how tough that kid is. Redshirt freshman Mike Hartline has to come off the bench cold. He's 4 of 6 passing this year for 34 yards. He's not passing. He's going to hand off instead to the fullback Connor. And Andre Woodson, if he can uh, clear his head a little bit and catch his breath, will come right back in for Kentucky. Boy, a tail of two halves. 180 yards here in the second, two touchdowns after a 7 of 13 performance in the first half. And here comes Andre Woodson. You know, second he, down and six. And you know, he wasn't too impressive, Craig, in that first half and really has been struggling to find his rhythm. The second half has been a lot better, but I've been impressed by his guts and his toughness this whole game. He's not afraid to step in there and take a hit. Three wide receivers to the far side. That ball was batted down incomplete as Woodson tried to find Little coming across the seam. Now the clock coming up on six minutes to play, and Rich Brooks may have a decision to make here very soon. That is to go for the seven, the six, and the, and the PAT, or do you go for three? Well, if, if it depends on what happens on this play right here, but I think if, if they do not get in, I think you have to take the three points because you got to come out of it with something on this drive. You can't, you can't come out empty. You say either way, you need a touchdown and a field goal. Take the field goal. You got plenty of time left. Now you got to go score a touchdown next time. They're down in six. Man coverage. Up and oh. cut! Oh. Touchdown! Steve Johnson! He out jumped the freshman. What a what an unbelievable play by Steve Johnson, man, right there. You, I talked a little bit earlier about Lindley on the other side making big plays for the defense. You look at what Steve Johnson has done this year, a 57-yard touchdown pass against Louisville with 28 seconds left and a big one in triple overtime against LSU and that big upset. The extra point is good. I mean, that's a big play guy stepping up, making another big play. That's what he does. Buckle up, down the stretch, 31-28, Tennessee. And Steve Johnson out jumps Brent Vinson in the corner, and Kentucky still breathing in Lexington. Welcome back to Lexington. A little early to celebrate, still down by three over 19th ranked Tennessee. You look at the timeouts, Kentucky with all three remaining, Tennessee with two, and that last scoring drive. Kentucky's had a way this, uh, this day, Steve, scoring quickly when needed. Eight plays, 66 yards, two and a half minutes off the clock. And they needed it. You got that right. They sure needed it right there. No, none more so than that one. So the kickoff is away. Rogan at the nine yard line at the 20 at the 25 still on his feet takes a tackle in Tennessee with good field position at the 30 yard line and here comes Eric Ainge now you have to remember Steve two ways to look at it 
You can continue to play game plan type of football, and, or, or you can get a little conservative, and that can come back and bite you. And if I'm Phil Fulmer, number one, I know that I, I probably made a mistake on that last drive, being a little too aggressive. Right here, you got to stay with your game plan. You've got to make some first downs. If nothing else, you've got to pin Kentucky way back. But you really need some points to feel good about where you're at. Play action goes Ains, steps up in that pocket, man coverage, it's out of bounds. Out of bounds. Oh, a great effort by Rodgers, who tried to put a foot down or two. And he kicked up some chalk, but out of bounds. And you know, the other thing that's going through Philip Fulmer's mind is that Kentucky, as you said, they have risen to the challenge the last couple of times they've had the ball. They've gone down and scored. And there you can see Rodgers comes down that foot right on the line. Good call. But Fulmer knows that if he gives the ball back to Kentucky, they have found some rhythm this second half. Ames this quarter, one of six passing, 10 yards and an interception. So what do you do when you struggle a bit? You go to the man, Arian Foster. Clock runs. Biggest play of the ball game right here. Third and seven. After a quiet first half, Big Blue is awake in Lexington. Third down and seven, under five and a half to play. It's a three-point Tennessee lead, Ainge from the shotgun. Sets up. Lobs it up high, incomplete! Terrific downfield coverage, Steve, that forced that, that throw by Kentucky secondary. It really was. You don't see Eric Ainge holding the ball back there that long normally. He knew he had to find somebody up the field to move those chains. And the crowd here sensing what's going on, I guarantee you, there's a few Red fans down there in Georgia that know what's going on, too. The Georgia Bulldog fans knowing that if Kentucky can get ahead of this ball game. They may be booking a date next week to the SEC championship. Cole quit his fourth punt, his longest of 44. He'll need a boot here and will kick away from his own 20-yard line. Pressure got it away. Good hang time. Little pedals back, takes it, trying to turn outside at the 30. Bumped out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Corey Peters. 42-yard punt, a seven-yard return. Welcome back, Lexington, Kentucky. Five minutes to play, fourth quarter, 31-28, Tennessee. Trying to hold on and earn themselves a trip to Atlanta and the SEC title game against LSU. Woodson. Sets up, throws far sideline, and Raphael Little stops the clock. 4.55 to play, and what a second half. Steve Berline by Andre Woodson. Well, you see, you're going to see some great throws right there. The first one, the Lions, and then here hitting Jacob Tammy in the back of the end zone. Then the gutsy last touchdown pass, coming back after getting knocked down and hitting Steve Johnson for the big touchdown to pull him within three. Look at those numbers in the second half. 192 yards. Three touchdowns, 16 to 24. This kid has shown me something today. Now, in this situation, they got to realize all they need is a field goal. Touchdown would be great, but you got to get at least a field goal here. I feel like we're in Baton Rouge last night. Wide open. And it's caught by Little. Little just snuck out of the backfield. And Little stops the clock. Two plays. They've taken 10 seconds off the clock, and they've marched 15 yards upfield. Yeah, good pocket for Andre Woodson right there. Nobody in his face and up, some right. kind of a busted in responsibilities there. there should have been somebody out in the flat somewhere near that area where Raphael Little caught that ball. You see D'Angelo Will Willingham yeah, kind of he's like, look back over his shoulder like, hey, where's the help? He's also pretty lucky that, that Little didn't know he was that open because he should have turned around and tried to beat him one on one. Instead of stepping out of bounds. 450 to play fourth quarter. And third and short. I'm going to stay with a passing game. A circus catch by Tammy. <laughs> oh, my. This is one of the best two and a half yard receptions I've ever seen in my life. Look, this, just to, to have the presence to catch that ball 
looking at the down marker, knowing where exactly he had to get. What a tremendous play by Jacob Tammy. Eight receptions, 87 yards on senior day in Lexington. Again, five wideouts on first and 10, 4.43 to play. Kentucky down by three. Your point is well made, Steve Berline. All they need is a field goal to force overtime. Oh! He threw the ball, and Burton never looked back. Wow. And Burton was streaking <laughs> down the sideline. They ran. It was the look of that screen pass with Little coming in. You see him right there. They faked it, and Burton, for whatever reason, did not realize that Andre Woodson was trying to suck that whole defense up and trying to pop it in that hole behind all Woods, all, all Burton had to do was turn around, and that ball would have been right in the chest. That's six. Well, it would have been one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, that's for sure. Second down and ten. Woodson takes the snap. Over the middle. Caught. Oh, that's no. it. It's free, and it's taken away by Kemp. Unbelievable. What a hit. Ricardo Kemp <laughs> comes up with that loose ball after a shot to Jacob Tammy. You know, you can't fault anybody here. It's two guys on the offense trying to make a tough play, but look at the hit by Gerard Mayo. Oh, and right there. I mean, if you're Jacob Tammy, you've got no idea what's coming right through your chin right here. You're trying to make the catch, and Mayo just timed it perfectly. The deflection absolutely could not have been better for Kemp to pull that thing in, but the credit goes to Mayo for making that hit. Great timing. I'll tell you, that play is an illustration of why John Chavis, a D coordinator, played uh, Mayo such a great compliment of playing like an All-American. He delivered the shot that, roll out, roll out, he needed it. He sure did. I mean, that, and that's what, that's what special players do. And that's what John Chavis was trying to tell us that he believes his linebackers are special players that are going to make a big impact at the next level. And because the struggles this defense have had, they haven't gotten that attention this year. But they are great players. That was another illustration of that. Clock under four minutes. Second down and seven. Tennessee, after the interception, trying to put close this one down and head on to Atlanta. But Kentucky refuses to let up. Great tackle by Jarman around the ankles. Big number 99. And a timeout. Timeout Kentucky. Yeah, Timeouts. They... Steve Berline, Tennessee with two, Kentucky with a pair, and Tammy trying to shake the cobwebs after that, that, that shot he took up around the chin. You know what Woodson was saying right there when he's clapping and encouraging his teammates? He's saying, guys, we're going to get the ball back. He knows there's three over three and a half minutes left in this ball game. This is a big play right here, third and seven for Tennessee. If the defense can rise up, there's plenty of time. And I, I really really respect how Woodson's handling himself going up there. That's a quarterback's responsibility to make sure your teammates don't get in the, the, the down in the dump when bad things happen like that. And Steven, this half, Tennessee one of seven on third down conversions. Ainge in the pocket, throws, slapped away, incomplete. And that brings up fourth down. Austin Rogers, the intended receiver. We've seen big play after big play by Tennessee and now by Kentucky. You know what the problem was right there? As we look right there following this Florida, Florida State coming up next. But we got a barn burner here. Austin Rogers on that play. Did you see him jump right before the ball got there? That is the worst thing a wide receiver can do when a ball's coming in your chest. You jump up, you leave the ground, you're going to get hit. You're, if you keep your feet on the ground, you got more of a base, more stability. He should have kept those feet on the ground. He might have been able to catch that ball. Rafael Little set to receive the kick from Colquitt. He wants to push that ball down inside. It takes a bounce, and it goes out of bounds. He angled it to the far side at the nine-yard line. We'll be back in Lexington. 3.32 to play. Tennessee 31, Kentucky 28. 
Wildcats with two timeouts. Tennessee with two timeouts remaining. Ainge, backside pressure, throws underneath, and it's caught by Tony Dixon. And a pickup down about the 16-yard line, so that brings up second down and call it four. I mean, there's no reason, Steve, to rush. The clock, it's amazing, still over three minutes to play, and you have yep. two timeouts to work with. Yep. And, and Craig, you need only a field goal. That's right, a field goal to tie. Craig, we talked in the, in the open about this is one of those situations you dream of. Woodson, wide open. Dickey Lyons, Jr., first down. They'll move the change to the 25-and-a-half yard line. But this is that exact situation. You sit there and you say, I want to be the guy, one of the guys involved in a situation where you've got a chance to make that winning drive, to hit that game-winning home run or the game-winning jump shot. This is that time for Andre Woodson and the Kentucky Wildcats. First and 10, clock now running after the chains are reset. Long snap count. I see a flag. I believe the right side is that Jeffries, the right tackle. A little, uh, a little movement before the, before the snap. On the offense, 25 yards, down main first. Jeffries, stay tuned. Florida State, Florida. First and 15. That's coming up next here on CBS. First, we have to finish out Tennessee and Kentucky. What a weekend of college football on CBS. <laughs> Triple overtime in Baton Rouge yes. last night. Yes. Arkansas behind McFadden's uh, incredible performance knocks off number one LSU. And then this game meaning so much going down to the wire. Two teams fighting with everything they've got left. From the shotgun, Woodson flares it out to the flat. Rafael Little dances down the sideline and steps out of bounds. Did he? Yes, they're going to stop the clock. 2.09 left to play. So that brings up second down and 11. 2.09 to play. Woodson steps up here. Protection deep ball. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Johnson. And I'll tell you, Willingham was in a great position to take that ball away. Well, it was really a bad ball by Andre Woodson. He had Steve Johnson open down the side. Let's see how Johnson has come back to it. He was open down the sideline. Willingham did a great job of fighting back into it. But the most important thing right now for Kentucky, they've got to find a way. Don't get desperate. You need a first down. You got plenty of time. You're going to have plenty of chances to get in field goal range. Get the first down right now. They're down and 11. Woodson surveys up and cut. Oh, oh, did he put that on the money to Tammy? Craig, you are going to see Brent Vincent, number 13, the freshman corner, had a chance to catch his ball almost. Watch his ball slip right by his hand. He's right there coming up right there. Look at that. He actually did tip it. He got a finger on that ball and an unbelievable catch to pull that in. What an afternoon for Tammy. Nine receptions, oh. 104 yards, and he keeps Kentucky. Kentucky's come back moving. Little slant. Oh, Burton spins out of one tackle and down at the 48-yard line. Great and balance. Clock, though, running. Kentucky with two timeouts if needed. And now we've got an injured ball down. Is it Mayo? Oh, you don't like that. The great middle linebacker. Number seven, Gerard Mayo, shaken up on the play. Out of Hampton, Virginia. So he's the, proto the prototype linebacker. Speed. He's got the size at 6'2", 230. I would not want to run in to Gerard Mayo. <laughs> No, thank you. You know what he's got, too, that makes him that much more? He's got the timing and the explosion. You know, not only is he a load, but when he hits you, he, he can accelerate and burst right through you. And that actually works in Kentucky's favor, that little injury there, because they got to have a play called. They're all set up. No clock running on that play. Two timeouts still in their back pocket, as does Tennessee. Pressure, stepping up, incomplete. Tammy, the intended receiver, 
The crowd wants flags. They stay in the pockets, and now we've got a flag and an injured ball down. Holding against Kentucky. Mitchell, That's number Xavier. 93. Xavier Mitchell. He's been bumped around a couple of times today. And so the trainers are out to, to attend to Xavier Mitchell, and he's up. So Mitchell takes a walk to the sideline and a flag holding the call against Kentucky. Busy day for Penn, uh, Penn Wagers. Holding, number 79, penalty 10 yards, now remains second. That's Gary Williams, uh, the guilty party, the left tackle. Second and 15. Well, let's look and see exactly what Gary Williams did. You're going to see the left tackle right there, number 79, is who got the call. You know, that's, that's tough. I mean, Xavier Mitchell was already going down, but he definitely did have his hands on him. Well, a pump by Woodson has room, throws it out to the flat. Far side, it's caught by Little, has room. Close to the first down, I believe he got it, and he stepped out of bounds to stop the clock. That is excellent field presence by Andre Woodson, knowing, hey, you know what, we're going to go for it on fourth down anyway. If it's not there up the field, much better to get half of it back. And you know what, this guy with the football is pretty good. Number 22, when he gets the ball in the open field, he can do something with it. He got a first down. Very good decision by Andre Woodson. And Little with his ninth catch for 94 yards. This time, they're going to go up the gut. And Little is taken down at uh, the 46-yard line of Tennessee. Now, Kentucky will use the timeout with 118 to play, and all Eric Ainge can do is watch mm -hmm. and try to hold and believe that three-point lead will be enough. 118 to play in Lexington. We'll be back on CBS. Kentucky uses one timeout. They have one remaining with 116 to play. 31-28, Tennessee. It was 24-7 balls at the half. A tail really of two halves. Tennessee got off to the fast start. Arian Foster, first play, 65 yards. And now we find ourselves, Kentucky trying to come back to tie this game or maybe win it in the final minutes. Kentucky needs to get to realistically about the 25-yard line and have a makeable field goal. To the flat. It's been there all day. And more yardage chewed up by Rafael Little to the 40. And the clock runs coming up on a minute to play. Kentucky still with a timeout. Tennessee with two. No panic. Everything is good. Laundry Woodson, complete control. You saw Seaver on the sideline trying to warm up that leg. If needed again, they go to the flat to the far side. Little running, breaks a tackle, and is stood up at the 31-yard line. It's the same play, opposite side of the field. You know, they've seen that Tennessee is doing nothing but just dropping back softly, and they're going to let Rafael Little catch that ball out there in the flat. Well, they better be careful because it's going to burn them here in a minute. They better get up and cover that. And Kentucky, of course, catches a break. The clock stops as they reset the chains on the first and 10. Here we go, 47 seconds left. Oh, very dangerous pass in traffic. Steve Johnson, the intended receiver, and the incompletion stops the clock with 44 ticks to play. So the 30-yard line would be the target. Sieber, his longest this season, 48 yards. But in this cold weather, and he hasn't kicked anything in a while other than an extra point, I, I think that realistically, Rich Brooks is thinking that 25-yard line probably gives him a 42, 43-yard kick. Uh-oh, illegal substitution. Wow, please, don't give it wild, please. Substitution on Kentucky. 12 people. Oh, and Rich Brooks grabs and has a, a chat with the freshman Derek Locke. Yeah. What happened? Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things where obviously Derek Locke thought he was supposed to be on the field. He went running out there, but nobody came off the field. And uh, that's one of the things the guy coming in has to do. You got to tap the guy you're going in for, tell him he's coming out. Pushes it back now, second down and 15. Woodson fires it up. Oh, the oh, nearly 
picked off. Oh, Eric Berry had the interception, but Burton able to put his fist and pop that ball out of the grasp of Berry. And if anybody, the volunteers, wanted to have a chance at that interception, it was Eric Berry. The guy's got four on the year. He's, a, he's an unbelievable nose for the football and comes up with those big plays. Boy, Andre Woodson got away with one there. So now third down and 15. Trying to find some yardage to help out your kicker, Sieber. To the far near sideline, spinning out of a tackle goes Dickie Lyons Jr. to the 19-yard line. Now, the clock stops with the first down. Now, you can start thinking you're in easy field goal range. Now you can take a couple shots at the end zone. Unbelievable. If you want. Yeah. Right now, if they would not gain a yard, it's a 37-yard kick. Exactly. So how aggressive you want to be, Rich Brooks and Joker Phillips? First and 10, Kentucky. 28 ticks left in regulation. Woodson sets up and fires. It's caught! Steve Johnson out of bounds at the six-yard line. You're not thinking field goal. You're thinking about victory in Lexington. You're darn right you are. And if I'm Andre Woodson, I'm thinking my offensive line is playing some great football this second half. They're giving me a chance to make these throws. He had all day back there, kept his poise, kept his cool, and then found Steve Johnson with a great throw on the sideline. Not only is the completion good for a first down, they get out of bounds, save that timeout. And Kentucky has not defeated Tennessee, let me remind you, in 22 years, 1984. First and goal, Kentucky at the five-yard line. 22 seconds to play. Under center goes Andre Woodson. Woodson steps up, fires. Incomplete, Ooh. nearly intercepted by the freshman left corner, Brent Vincent. 17 seconds to play. Oh, that was close, Craig. And Brent Vincent, now remember, he's a converted wide receiver, so he's got hands. They converted him because he was a tremendous athlete that needed help on the defensive side, and he's the guy that they felt could make that adjustment. Should have had that catch right there. Yeah, you started the season as a wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. And made the change midway. Yep, the Georgia game was his first start. Second down and goal. 17 seconds to play. Three-point Tennessee lead. Woodson to the corner. Jump ball. Incomplete. There's a flag down. Yep, P.I. And the intended receiver was Burton. And Vincent is down. Now, now here's what you got to do here now. Vincent down, looks like a shoulder. Pass interference, number 13 on the defense. Foul card in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two yard line. First down, go. Okay, there's little contact now. Yep, he's in the face a little bit early in Keenan Burton's face. Rich Brooks, yeah, he's saying, no doubt you got to throw that flag. That's right. Yeah, thank you. You got it, buddy. Knew you it all along, it. and it's yep. good to see Vincent back up. Yeah, that, that shoulder was uh, outstretched. Yeah, that's, that's painful. And, and you know what? Give this kid credit now. True freshman making the adjustment from wide receiver to starting cornerback in the SEC, oh. he's really in a lot of pain. Yeah, he is. But now here's the deal. You got one timeout. Now you can really run the football here. Second goal from the two, or first and goal from the two-yard line. You can get it in with the run. If not, call a timeout. 13 seconds to play, first and goal. Raphael Little is the lone back. Kentucky with the football. Little up the middle. Stop. No, the no stop, stop. Stopped at the one-yard oh, line, and Kentucky will not. use their last time out. you got to throw a quick pass at this point now. I and mean, you're here. You're this far. you got to try and make something happen quick. Andre Woodson has to know, I cannot take a sack at all. You can't take a sack. It's got to go into the end zone. It can't be a scramble, run around, and make something happen. It's got to be a quick throw that if it's either a touchdown or an incomplete pass, 
you got time for your kicker to get out there and make the kick. Tennessee, if needed, two timeouts. 17th play. 17th play of this drive. Coming up for Kentucky. 17th play. What a drive. Unbelievable drive. Woodson, by the way, this half alone, 28 of 42, 305 yards oh, and three God. touchdowns. What what a comeback in the second half for the Kentucky Wildcats. But you know what? This Tennessee team has made a lot of plays along the way, too. They've only scored seven points in the second half, but their defense has been out there a lot, and they've been some tremendous plays, you know, fumbles and hits and interceptions and all that kind of stuff. But the resilience of that man, Andre Woodson, still coming back. They got a chance to get this thing turned around. Pass or run? You got to pass. Shotgun, low snap, Woodson dropped it, picks it up, time down Going away. Five, throws it to the end zone, oh, incomplete, with one second to play. He, you know, <laughs> the Rich Brooks is going to pull him aside afterwards and say, what do, you, what do you think you got all day? I mean, you got to make a quick throw. He drops the ball. I would have just thrown it through the uprights, right? As soon as that ball hit the ground, stand up, throw it through the goal post, get your kicker out there and make the kick. You don't, and, and you know what? He still almost threw a touchdown pass to Keenan Burton. He was open. So here we go. Overtime will be decided by Lona Sieber. Four of four on field goals attempted from 20 yards. They're going to place this ball down at the 10-yard line. Timeout. A 20-yard attempt, out. and now Philip Fulmer, as I expected, is going to try to freeze the young man from Knoxville. Oh, man. <laughs> can you believe oh. this game? Can you believe the SEC? Triple overtime at Baton Rouge. Last night. Today, we've got, we're have got we just on the brink of overtime and yet to come floor to Florida State. Now, we don't want to assume anything. That Seaver, that young man's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. Everybody in this stadium and all the pressure these senior class has of, of trying to end that 22-year streak. But yeah, you, you sit there and think, man, this is probably going to go to overtime. This SEC is unbelievable. Un I, mean, I it, mean, every weekend, there's a storyline. Whether you knock off number one or you have triple overtime. And there's a reason why the SEC has commitments to have at least eight teams in the bowl games. At least eight teams, possibly nine. What, you're telling me they play good football? They play good. They know how to play football. And I'll tell you, these coaches know how to coach. And these players, they lay it on the line every week. They have to. It's hard to win a ball game in this league. And Rich Brooks, what can you say about the job he's done getting the respectability back into this University of Kentucky football team? All these seniors say it's his mentality, his never say die, going to fight till the end mentality prevails. And tonight's another great example of that. Brooks is on the verge of consecutive eight win seasons. Here we go. Lona Sieber, sophomore, Knoxville, Tennessee, 20 yard field goal will send it in to overtime. That's where we're headed. From 20 yards with one second on the clock, 31 all. A remarkable comeback by Kentucky to force overtime in Lexington. How about identical scores? First half, 24 to 7 Kentucky, or Tennessee. Second half, Kentucky outscores them 24 to 7. We've got 31-31. And an incredible overtime coming up, I think it's safe to say. That drive with 18 plays, 90 yards in 3 minutes and 32 seconds in the 20-yard field goal by Sieber. All right, college football overtime. Point toss will decide possession. And, Steve, the offense starts at the opponent's 25. Each team keeps the ball until it scores or fails to make a first down. Beginning with the third overtime, the team must attempt the two-point conversion, which what occurred last night in Baton Rouge after the touchdown. Exactly right. There was the two-point conversion that Arkansas scored on the run by Felix Jones. LSU came back, scored the touchdown last night, but was unable to convert on the two-point conversion. That was the ball game last night. Tennessee, 6-1, and one, all time in overtimes. The only loss, by the way, seven years ago at LSU. 
They've won their last five in overtime. And for Kentucky, this is the fifth time they've played extra quarters, two and two all time. And Eric Ainge and that Kentucky or a Tennessee offense, they haven't been on the field in a while. It's been a long, long five minutes. And the captains will meet at midfield. Woodyard, the terrific linebacker, Ainge. You know, see, when this game is broken down, it really has been Tennessee, first and second quarter, Kentucky, quarters three and four, and especially just the gritty third and fourth quarter play of Andre Woodson. No doubt about it. Let's see who gets the ball first. Tennessee won the toss, elects to go on defense. Kentucky had chosen to play on this end of the field. Overtime in Lexington. Craig Bowler, Jack, Steve Verline, overtime in Lexington. And Steve, it's, it's been very simple all day long. Tennessee wins. They clinch the SEC East, go to Atlanta to play LSU for the SEC title. If they lose, Georgia would punch the ticket and head to Atlanta. So here we go. First overtime, Andre Woodson steps up, throws out of bounds, incomplete second down. This crowd quiet, all standing. I think they're in shock that we're in overtime. 31 <laughs> all, incredible comeback down 24-7 at the break. I wouldn't blame them. You talk about an emotional roller coaster. This has been it in every sense of the word, as you said. Quarters one and two, totally different than quarters three and four. That's why you love this game. The momentum can change so quickly. It's a beautiful thing. Second down to 10 from the 25. Shotgun for Woodson. In motion goes Raphael Little. Three-step drop, fires it near side. It's caught at the 10-yard line and bumped down. On a bounds goes Keenan Burton. The senior from Louisville, Kentucky. Another good example right there of Woodson standing strong in the pocket. He was under some pressure, but delivered a strike. I don't really understand how Keenan Burton, they're, they're really their number one receiver, was that wide open out there in the flat. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but the bottom line is Woodson saw it and made a great throw. Now first and goal. At the eight-yard line, 31 all in overtime. Wide open. It's caught. Touchdown, Burton, Kentucky. Steve, they throw near side yeah. and come back with a far side catch wide open, and Kentucky strikes. I can't really understand why Tennessee would be playing so soft. Yet Willingham, who's they've been up challenging the receivers all day, and here. They get down close to the end zone, and they just, in the overtime period, they give them two easy throws, and it's a touchdown. You know, you let a receiver like Keenan Burton catch the ball one-on-one -on -one at the four-yard line with about five yards to work with. He's going to get in most of the time. Extra point to come by Sieber. And punches it through. Let's go to New York, and here's Tim Brando. All right, fellas, here's a little taste of what's to come after you're finally done in overtime. Don't tug on Superman's cape. Look at Tim Tebow, 23 yards. This is an answer to an earlier field goal. It's 7-3 Gators. Back to you. And, Timmy, I think Tebow is trying to answer what McFadden put on stage last night in Baton Rouge. I think you're right. He wants, he smells that Heisman Trophy, you know, there's a lot more at stake than the Heisman Trophy as far as what, what he could be playing for, but that Heisman Trophy, he wants it. Lexington is rocking. Wildcats have not defeated Tennessee since 1984, and a man named Reagan was in the White House. Ainge in the fourth quarter, one of eight, 10 yards and an interception. Under center goes Ainge. Stretches it out. Foster. Runs it outside, down the sideline, and is bumped out of bounds and will stop the clock. Well, the clock's no, not running here in overtime. 
Arian Foster, terrific afternoon by this young guy. The junior from San Diego. Well over a thousand yards rushing on the season. How about 25 carries for 109 yards? That's 10 career 100-yard games and his fifth this season. Yep, when he's rolling like he's been rolling the last few weeks, Tennessee is hard to stop. Second down and two inside the 20. Thrown behind Lucas Taylor. And Eric Ainge would love to have that one back. That was an easy throw and catch. Trying to move the chains and maybe give Lucas Taylor a chance to turn that ball up the sideline, pick up a few more, but really a bad, inaccurate throw by Eric Ainge there. Third down and two, Tennessee. This crowd ready to break into a frenzy. Ainge will step back in shotgun formation. Right alongside is Foster. They need two for a first down. Direct snap goes to Foster. First down. Oh, and he delivers a blow out of bounds. And he put the hurt, and I mean, he put the hit <laughs> on the Kentucky Wildcats. My goodness, that was uh, David Jones who absorbed that hit from Arian Foster. Yeah, David Jones caught a mouthful of shoulder. And you know, when we were talking to Arian Foster yesterday down there in the field before their walkthrough, he is a big man. Oh, he is yes. a load. That was two and a quarter. First and 10, Tennessee at the 13 of Kentucky in the first overtime. 38-31, Wildcats, far side. Once again, the workhorse Foster takes it out of bounds, and that brings up second down. Foster hit by Harrison, the free safety. Well, you know, Rich Brooks told us it's about depth. He's gained respect for this Kentucky program once again. You know, you always think about basketball when you think about Lexington and Big Blue. No, no. Football. Football is big in Lexington. Second down and nine. Shotgun. Ainge steps back to the end zone. Man coverage. Oh! What a grab by Gerald Jones, the freshman. Tennessee. You have got to be kidding. They just on his back and he pulls it in. They just keep coming out of the woodwork. Gerald Jones. How many catches does he have on the year? But what a none. Seventh big. reception for the freshman from Oklahoma City. And none, safe to say, bigger than that one right there. Look at that adjustment and catching that ball. Two hands up now. for Philip Fulmer. It is going to be reviewed, though, Rich Brooks. They're reviewing it right now to make sure, and you'll, we see that again. We'll see in the corner of the end zone that I don't think there's any doubt that, that Gerald Jones catches this ball. The question was, was it under control before down? He's got both hands on it. Ooh, look at that. That ball did at some point hit the ground now. Did he have his hand under the ball? That's, that's the question. That's the question. It's got to be clearly not under the ball for it to be overturned. Now, let's see. He's got both hands on it. That angle, it's hard to tell from that angle. He never loses control of it. And rolls so, right up with it. Maybe this angle one more time this, coming right at you. Yep. And here it is. It, he's got Brings both it hands in. on it. The ball hits the ground. Man, that is a tough one. It, if I'm the officials, I, you know, it's not clear either way. So I say you don't overturn it. You give them the touchdown. That's, a, that's the way I got to look at it. You know, they might say the ball hit the ground. But if I'm making that call, I say you can't overturn it because it's not obvious. And that, that you got to give them the touchdown. If it was ruled incomplete, I would have said you can't give them a touchdown. Exactly. We're going to blow it up a little bit for you. On his hands, terrific grab. Now does he have possession? Even at that angle. You can see right there, that ball is touching the ground. But it's just not clear enough whether he's got control. His rule to touchdown, I think it stays a touchdown. Gerald, Gerald Jones, a freshman. He was uh, the Oklahoma Player of the Year in 2006. A quarterback, a terrific After runner. Here we go. The ruling on the field stands. 
touchdown. Yep. That's the right call. It's to, it was just too close to change it. There's no way you can confidently overturn that call. It was not conclusive. The right call was made. Daniel Lincoln. Daniel Lincoln now must hit the extra point to send it to the second overtime. Good snap, good hold, and punches it through. So we head to the second overtime. I'll tell you, the last two weeks for Tennessee, <laughs> I mean, no wonder Phil Fulmer is, uh, has lost a few yeah, hairs along have any the hair way. Left? He rallied know. back. He scored 16 unanswered to win at Vanderbilt. At the half tonight, up 24-7, on the road to Kentucky, and now we're on our second overtime in Lexington. And of course, Tennessee's playing for a trip to Atlanta. SEC title game against LSU. A loss tonight, and the Georgia Bulldogs will take on the Tigers. And remember what Kentucky told us to a man. I was really impressed with this. With the players, especially the players, they told us that this game was not about Tennessee in their opinion. This game is about us, about Kentucky about what we've accomplished in our years here, about going out on the right note, leaving a legacy, and about getting to a big bowl game. They didn't appreciate the fact that it was all about Tennessee. Kentucky has chosen to go on defense. Tennessee has chosen to play on this end of the field. So Tennessee now will have possession to start the second overtime. Florida State, Florida. That will be next on CBS. What a day it's been for college football. Last night, beautiful game played down in Baton Rouge here in Lexington, and we'll take you to Gainesville after the conclusion. So once again, the rules, you start at your 25-yard line. And Tennessee will have possession here in the second overtime. 38 all after Burton touchdown for Kentucky and Gerald Jones's first career touchdown for Tennessee. Ball start on the ground to Foster who pushes to the 21. Foster has done everything and more for Tennessee today. You know, and something I think, Craig, that doesn't get a lot of attention is how difficult it is when a team finishes second and they score a touchdown at one end of the field. They got to come back right away. They get the ball back again. They got to score another touchdown. That's hard to do. Second down and six. Ainge with a quick glance to the sideline. Crowd is on their feet. Under center, Ainge. Ball's batted up, intercepted. Sam Maxwell. The sophomore <laughs> from Hartwell, Georgia. Oh my goodness, look at this. Good defense. That was Trevard Lindley again, finding a way to make a play. Watch, he gets his hand on the ball, gets that head around, finds it, knocks it up in the air. And there's Maxwell in the right place at the right time, going to the football and bringing it in. Third interception by Kentucky secondary. And now the Wildcats will have their chance to win and break a 22-year drought against Tennessee. Question is whether Woodson wants to leave it to his kicker or do it himself. Woodson. Handoff, bouncing outside, goes Little. And they'll lose a couple back to around the 26, maybe the 27 yard, and Dennis Rogan, the freshman, put a good hit on Raphael Little. If I'm Tennessee, you know, you, you, you can't allow them to get into easy field goal range because that's a ball game obviously there, so you're trying to create pressure. I, I'm, I'm coming from every angle. If I'm, if I'm John Chavis, I'm trying to cause as much havoc out there as I possibly can because if you give up the field goal, that's it. You got to make something happen. Try and get the ball back. Second down at 12. Under center goes Woodson. Two wide receivers to the near side. 
Second overtime. Option. Little pitch. Near side comes Rafael Little. Squares his shoulders and runs his way to the 21 yard line. That's a good, solid seven yard run right there. I think you keep calling safe plays if you're if you're Kentucky. And a, and a safe play could be a throw to the end zone. You know, you throw a fade pattern to the outside if you want to try and go to it quick, if you don't want to put it in your kicker's hands. But you sure don't try and kick the ball from here. You still, right now, you got a 38-yard kick if you try and kick from this point. Third down and four at the 20-yard line. Second overtime, Kentucky and Tennessee. He's got man coverage. Could easily take a shot at the end zone here. Ball show pressure. Up the middle they go. Short of the first down at the 17-yard line. Rafael Little. And now you go for the win. And all the pressure is on the shoulders of Lona Sieber. This will be a 35-yard attempt for the win and the upset of Tennessee. Yeah, and, and, and I believe there might be a little celebration in Lexington if this thing goes through. And coming in to this game, Sieber, six of seven from this range on the season. Yep. Timeout, Tennessee. Their one timeout of the period. So you try to freeze Sieber. Two things at stake in this game in Lexington, and there's a buzz, of course, in this crowd. They're going to rush the field if the victory comes because it's been 22 years, 1984, since a victory over Tennessee. And if Tennessee would lose this game, that means Georgia, who I'm sure is around a television set, is going to book plans to, to play LSU in Atlanta yep. for the SEC championship on CBS. Yep. <laughs> there, is, there is so much at stake here for so many different programs. And all Kentucky wants is to end this thing on the right note and to, to get to that warm bowl game as, as Jeremy uh, Jeremy Jarman told us in our interview, hey, give me someplace warm. It all comes down to this. Lona Sieber's right foot. 35-yarder. Here we go. Picked up after the block. Tennessee rumbling. Still throwing that ball, is still loose. My goodness, could it be? Oh, that may be a face mask. Multiple flags are down at the 35-yard line. The field goal blocked, and Tennessee had a chance <laughs> to run it back. Are you kidding me? I don't think the penalty will affect anything because Tennessee was on defense. They can't run their kicker out, and it just becomes uh, the next overtime period. <laughs> I, I mean, can how do you explain this stuff? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> what else is left in the bag? By rule, when we have a change of possession in overtime and there is a foul, that foul is disregarded. The try is over. We're going into third overtime period. Unbelievable. Third overtime. And this is what happened. The 35-yard attempt coming from the corner. Oh, it just got a piece. It, it looked to me like that was Big Dan Williams. It was. Number 55. 55. Yep. Getting that big right paw up, and there's coming through the left guard gap right there. There it is. The hand goes up his left hand, actually. Yeah, hit him right in the elbow. And Phil Fulmer says... Maybe it was meant to be. Look at this. Get the ball. <laughs> he, he's saying Mike Richt in Georgia. <laughs> Don't book those plane reservations Tennessee yet. Tennessee has chosen to play on defense. Kentucky has decided to play on this end of the football field. Oh. Now, if, if there's a score, <laughs> as we saw last night with LSU and Arkansas, a score means a two-point conversion yes. to follow. Yes. And that really makes things interesting. That's what decided the game last night. And it, it usually does come down to a two-point conversion in those situations. Third overtime in Lexington. If you just joined us, it's been a wild 
day slow to start Tennessee struck first first play of the game and Steve does it surprise you after what how we started this game how we're going to end it <laughs> you know knowing what I know about this SEC I don't think anything surprises me they, these games always these big games always end up being incredibly exciting and incredibly emotional and tremendous plays one one after another it just doesn't end Oh, now Kentucky in the third overtime at the 25-yard line. Back under center goes Woodson. Three-step drop, near side. Pitch and catch, big grab. Burton out of bounds. And let's check in. Back in New York. And here's Tim Brando. All right, Craig. Well, he ran for one from 23 yards out. Now he throws... 32 yards to Lewis Murphy does Tim Tebow. I'd say he can heat it pretty well, Steve Berline. 14 to 3, Gators. Back to you. Yeah, Steve, I want to see you and Tebow line up. <laughs> no, you don't. Trust me, you don't want to see that. <laughs> First and 10. Hand off little. All day long. Running inside and out. Craig, one thing that's uh, that's worth noting right here. Now you've got Dennis Rogan, the uh, the return specialist, who's out there on the left corner for Tennessee, and Woodson knows that. Believe me, he knows that. The true freshman Vincent went out a little earlier with that shoulder injury. He was moved over the corner because of their injuries and lack of experience at the corner position. So Rogan really is the guy that did not fit into their plans at corner going into this season. A touchdown would force Kentucky because of the rules to go for two that's what happens on uh, during the third overtime so here we go 38 all second down seven Andre Woodson steps up pumps pulls it back down throws it up and over the top incomplete off the hands of Johnson oh he had it took a little bump and dropped it and this is a play that I think if you ask Rich Brooks if you want to take your chances who do you want to make that catch it's Steve Johnson He's going to make that catch probably seven or eight times out of ten. Look, he gets both those big mitts on the ball. Just didn't quite control it when he came down. D'Angelo Willingham on that second effort right there just yep, punched it yep. out. Did a great job of just getting in there. Just punched it out. So now, Steve, we're looking at third down. You have to get to the five, just inside the five-yard line for fresh downs. Kentucky 9 of 18 on the day on third down conversions. Woodson, three-step drop, man coverage of the end zone. Touchdown, got Burton! Got it for <laughs> Kentucky. Two-point conversion, a must on the th in the third overtime. Well, I really thought it was going to come. You had a bump and run on Steve Johnson on this side on Rogan, but Woodson decides to challenge the other side on Willingham, and great job by Keenan Burton of spin look he he fakes and got willingham a little bit disoriented he had a great release got out got up on top of him on the outside willingham never had a chance to look back and make a play on that ball it was in the perfect location from woodson and burton times it beautifully knows exactly where his feet have to come down now the ever important two-point conversion oh this is where it gets interesting you take it back out and you have to run it in or pass for the two-point conversion Two wide receivers near side. Under center goes Woodson. Huge second half. And in overtime. Pulls that ball back down. Looks back the other way. Pulls it back down. Throws it. And it's taken away by Tennessee. Its ball is dropped. Still on the loose out of bounds. And again, we've seen another trick in the bag. I can't believe Kentucky didn't fall on that in the end zone to convert the two-point conversion. They had a chance at it. The way this game is going, nothing would surprise me, but Andre Woodson just saying, you know what, it's a two-point conversion. Nobody's open. I'm just going to get rid of it instead of taking a sack. Interception. Ball is knocked out right there. Look at now. Had a chance almost to fall on it there in the end zone. Don't know who that was. but Kicked it out of bounds. Steve everybody. Johnson right there trying to get his hand on it. A mad scramble. It is kicked out of bounds and now we have Tennessee 
at the 25-yard line in the third overtime. And already we see the effect of that rule. It's got to be a two-point conversion. Five wide receiver set, three set to the near side. Eric Ames, shotgun. Steps, looks near side, goes far side, and not much. Good read by Kentucky's defense. Lucas Taylor picks up two, and he's hit by the free safety, Calvin Harrison. You know, one thing we haven't talked about all night, Craig, is the red zone offense and defense of either of these teams. And it's, a, it's amazing. When you look at the stats, they're all offensively and defensively at 64% as far as either scoring touchdowns or giving up touchdowns. So it's dead even. Second down and eight for Tennessee. Ainge steps back once again in the shotgun. Three wide outs near side. Ainge sets up some fires and a slow off the hands of Lucas Taylor incomplete. Third down. Yeah, that ball got away from Ainge a little bit. But, you know, it, it's hard. It's hard to get every throw exactly where you want to get it. It's tough. Ainge has had a heck of a ball game. And see if he's got any more magic in his bag of tricks here. Tennessee, third down. Five of 15 on third down tries in this game. From the shotgun once again, from the 30-yard line, pressure, slingshots it to the flat. It's caught. Gerald Jones high steps it inside the, the five. First down. And yes, fresh downs for Tennessee. What 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 an incredible instinctive play by this guy. You said he was the Oklahoma State player of the year. Look at the instinct. He catches this ball. He's well short of the of the first down. He, but he says, you know what? I'm gonna just split this double team and go straight ahead and make sure that I get this first down. First and 10 at the 13 yard line. Quick throw, far side, it's caught. Rogers, touchdown, oh. Tennessee! Now, here we go. Two point conversion. <laughs> and if they punch in two, punch the ticket to Atlanta and the SEC title game. Yes, sir. You don't think Georgia fans are chewing the nails right now? Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, what, I guarantee you, Mike Rick knows exactly what's going on right now. He's got somebody. Mark Rick, I'm sorry. Mark Rick is the guy that he knows exactly what's going on on the sidelines in that Georgia game right now. Timeout. Three overtimes, 44 all, Tennessee will go for two and the win and somehow Austin Rogers there you go split the two defenders and hopped and skipped in for the touchdown well it was it was just a, a perfectly executed play the right call at the right time again that throw the key is to make sure you can get the ball to the receiver with some space and then he had great blocking on the outside and Philip Fulmer knows that is exactly the way we draw up that play now <laughs> He put up the one. We don't want the one. No, we you, want you the gotta two. Have, you <laughs> got to go for two in the third overtime. He'd say, I, uh, actually, uh, I'd like to go for one if I could, please. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to bring out Daniel Lincoln. Yeah, let's just hit it on, a, on an extra point. So the two-point conversion is next. And if they find the end zone, they find Atlanta. Yes, sir, they do. SEC championship game next week. Against LSU, is it going to be Tennessee or is it going to be Georgia? Will it be Arian Foster or Lucas Taylor or Austin Rogers for Tennessee? Ainge, shotgun. Here we go. Third overtime and a trip to Atlanta. It's going to be Foster. Can he turn the corner? No! <laughs> we head to the fourth overtime. Oh, man. David Jones, unbelievable open field tackle. You got the motion coming across by Lucas Taylor to seal the backside. Give it to your big horse. David Jones says he's not too big for me to bring down. I'm going to take his legs out. Look at that perfect timing. Jones has made several big tackles in this game late in the second half. And now here in the third After the overtime. Play is over, dead ball, unsportsmanlike on Tennessee. That will be administered during the fourth overtime period. Administered during the fourth overtime period. Personal foul. I wonder if it was just Arian Foster throwing that football after he got knocked out of bounds. I can't believe it. 
that that would be it. There had to be something else a little bit more significant than that. Remember now, coming up next, that game that's already going on, Florida State, Florida, the Tim Tebow show, well underway already. They're going to have a hard time keeping up with this game, though, Craig, don't you think? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I still can't get over what's occurred in the SEC. Georgia waiting anxiously to see the outcome of this game. Tennessee waiting to see the outcome as well. I put my check mark here once. I put it here once. I keep going back and forth. I don't know where to put the next check mark. Where are we going with it? Who's going to go? Who wants it? <laughs> well, Georgia, they Georgia, both want it. Georgia wants it. But Georgia. you know what? The, but here's the here's the uh, dilemma. Kentucky wants it too, because they want to increase their opportunity for a better bowl bid. That's exactly right. And also to break a 22-year drought against that's, Tennessee. And that's every bit as much as anything. I mean, you, you, you want to be on that team. You don't want to be number 23. You want to be number one of a new streak. And that's what's motivating Rich Brooks and. His team. Kentucky has chosen defense. Tennessee has chosen this end of the field. The unsportsmanlike foul on number 27 on Tennessee will move the ball to the 40-yard line. So Arian Foster, and that costs 15 yards for Tennessee. It, it, it looked like a very small thing, and I, I really Honestly, Craig, I'm really disappointed this call would be made at this point in the ball game with so much riding on it. You'll see after Aaron Foster gets tackled here on the sideline, you're going to see he just rolls over and immediately stands up and just throws the ball in the air. That's all it is. And I, 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 I understand delay of game and all that, but this is the SEC championship on the line. You don't. You don't throw a, 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 a debatable flag in a situation like that. Now, Tennessee's got to go 40 yards instead of 25. Fourth overtime in Lexington. 44 all. Ain shotgun. Good protection up and over. Wide open. <laughs> Doubling five. Touchdown. Quentin Hancock. Then again, I guess it just doesn't matter. Who cares about the 40 yards? <laughs> Quentin Hancock was so wide open on this play that, that this disciplined Kentucky defense completely lost their discipline as they have done several times tonight and given up a lot of big plays to Tennessee. I mean, Eric Ainge comes out and he sees how open Hancock is and he's thinking, it can't be. Well, Hancock was so open, he nearly lost his footing and stumbled at the 15-yard line. You just don't get that open on two, the first play of a drive two-point conversion now for tennessee three wide receivers top of your screen Ainge, as he has most of the day drops back in shotgun formation fourth overtime two-point conversion on the way Ainge steps up throws dumps hits it two-point conversion austin rogers and will be back kentucky must answer after this Fourth overtime, and Kentucky must find the end zone and convert on a two-point conversion. Rafael Little bounces. That ball, I thought, popped out. Did he grab it back? And he did at the 17-yard line. A pickup of seven, maybe eight. Boy, Rafael Little running so hard for Kentucky. The same for Arian Foster for Tennessee. That's a pickup of eight. Second down and two. Fourth overtime. 52-44. Tennessee working for a trip to Atlanta and the SEC title game. Every one of these overtime drives is a gut check for both the offense and the defense. Big play after big play tonight. Draw play. Lock. Stacked up and dropped at the 14-yard line. Now, we've played most likely, Steve. This game has gone on now for four and a half hours. Am I right? After 6 o'clock Eastern. I think you're right. I think you're 100% right. Hey, you're, you're talking about, about a game and a half of football. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been a long time, but I, I'll tell you what, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Are you kidding me? Want to play all night? Let's, oh, let's, let's do it. it going. 
First and ten. I don't know how our buddies Vern and Gary would feel about this down in Florida, but. They stretch it out to Derek Locke. Has room at the ten. Cut back at the five and slides to the three-yard line. Oh, this kid's going to be good for Kentucky. Yeah, he, he, I like the way he runs the football. Listen to this, Craig. You want to hear some pretty impressive uh, passing stats tonight? Combined, these two quarterbacks, 67 of 107 passes, five interceptions and 13 touchdowns. <laughs> oh, this will be long remembered. We said there's going to be a lot of balls in the air. And we've got a player hurt on the field. Tennessee player down, can't see the number at the five. It, it might be Xavier Mitchell again. I saw a three in there. That was a tremendous run, though. When that lock, when he gets going, when he makes that turn around the corner, boy, it, it is, it is no messing around he's coming downhill and fast well rich brooks told us that uh, it's really a uh, in a way and joker phillips echoed it as well the offensive coordinator he, he's a find because he was actually he's a track man yeah. came in on a track scholarship and said yeah i'm gonna play some football and last year at hugo high school at least the numbers in the press guide indicate 51 touchdowns and of course long jumped over uh, 25 feet, four inches, the longest jump in the nation a year ago. H hard to believe he wouldn't be going somewhere. The way he runs that football, he wouldn't get a chance to go play football somewhere. Now the trainers and continue to aid the injured Tennessee player. You saw DeMonte Bolden on a knee, checking in on his teammate. Eric Ainge. Nothing. Let's go to New York for an update. Here's Tim. Okay, Craig. Tim Tebow strikes again, this time to Lewis Murphy. 14 yards, their second hookup. And he is rolling, answering the gauntlet laid down by Darren McFadden. It's 21 to 6 now. Gators over the Seminole. Back to you. Tim, I tell you, I think it's going to be one close vote. McFadden was on that national stage uh, last night on CBS. Arkansas with the, uh, the win over LSU, top ranked in the country. That will change. In fact, the entire scenario in college football, Steve, will, will change when the next polls and the BCS roll out. Big time. I mean, it, it's not a minor change. It's going to be a big time change, and that is Xavier Mitchell looks like sitting up. and Good to see him sitting up. Don't know exactly what the injury might be, but... He's been nicked up a couple of yeah. times in this ball game. It, it has been a physical game, to say the least. Mitchell, the senior from Long Beach, Mississippi. There we go. Get him up on his feet. There he is, and able to walk off uh, the field under his own power. Down for a couple of minutes. It's first and goal now for Kentucky. And Steve, it's very simple. In overtime, you must score. You got a, Tennessee has the lead. They went for two, of course, and scored. And now Kentucky must score and then go for the two-point conversion. Yes. yes. To send this game to a fifth overtime. First and goal at the two-yard line. Locke is the lone back. Had a word with Woodson. Lock, the ball carrier. Pop three. Did he get in? Well, he's close. He's they're gonna run up. He's about a half a yard shy inside the one-yard line. Oh, Touchdown. they gave it to him. They gave it to him. The officials ran in. They wanted to see where the ball was. Well, actually they've broken the plane and it did. Yes, sir. You see, boy, he hits that hole up. He, he only they only have him listed at 180 pounds, but he runs strong. Broke the plane. Yeah. Yeah, push back, but he broke the plane. Now the two point conversion to and send this game into a fifth overtime. Now, here's the problem, Craig. When you get into a situation like this, this much scoring and this many opportunities, you have a certain number of plays in game plan for inside that five yard line, inside the three yard line. The, I think right now you're pretty much drawing them in the dirt because you've used them all. 
you've been in there too many times to say, okay, we'll go to our next two-point play, our next play inside the three-yard line. You've gone through who knows how many in that particular situation. You've got to get creative now and, and probably run a play you haven't practiced at all. And, and so basically is this. They've scouted you. They've looked at you on film. I speak of Tennessee. Right. They know your tendencies. You want to pull one out of the bag right now. Out of the bag that, that might catch them off guard, but that you haven't practiced because you've used all the plays that you've got. Now, do you go back? Sure, you can go back and run a play that, that maybe did or didn't work earlier and try and catch them off guard. But coaches in this situation, try and come up with something that the opponent has not seen yet. Eric Ainge on the bench awaits if needed. 52-50, two-point conversion must be scored by Kentucky. If they fail, Tennessee wins the East and earns a trip to play LSU in the SEC title game next weekend on CBS. I would venture it's to that say, simple. Yeah, and I've We will see sort of emotional reaction on the field. <laughs> there will be some emotions going down there, I guarantee it. Kentucky must score. And now a timeout, uh, Tennessee. Homer trying to ice the, the two-point play. He wanted to see what, what, what set the, the Wildcats were going to come out in, see exactly how they were going to line up. And you know what his thinking is as much as anything? And I'm going to make Kentucky go to another play now because they've shown me what they want to do. Now they got to another play that they maybe did. Good play. Smart. Look at what the defensive set was for Tennessee. Yeah, and up to it. I think the advantage goes to the the defense in that scenario, though, because Philip Fulmer will say, well, if they come out in that same set, defense coordinator. This no. 250. Yes, they did. Three wide. The two point conversion this has room. Tackle from behind. to remember in Lexington 23 straight Tennessee has beaten Kentucky time to check out the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler and it was just a moment ago in the fourth overtime Steve Berline Woodson unable to scramble away they knock the ball away from Woodson Tennessee recovers and earns a trip to the SEC title game our Ruby Tuesday player of the game Eric Ainge, passing for nearly 400 yards, seven touchdowns, a career high. For Steve Berline, Craig Bullerjack, we say so long from Lexington with a final score in four overtime, 52-50. Stay tuned, rivals clash, Florida State at 12th ranked Florida. A thriller in Lexington. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.